hoping to do exactly that. The show band of the Southwest lined up in the traditional tee. The Longhorns ready to pile onto the field and play some football against the Kansas Jayhawks. 4-0 in Big 12 play, trying to make that 5-0. Now it's time for the Horns to go up and sing in unison, the Eyes of Texas. say welcome back Longhorns in the eyes of Texas back after 42 days away from Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium the Longhorns looking to make it 5-0 in the Big 12 against the Kansas team winless in the Big 12 for not just this year but the last 25 Big 12 games. Hello again everybody along with Ray Bentley I'm Dave Lamont thank you very much for joining us in the the re-rise of Texas after that slow start has really been one of the biggest stories in college football, Ray, and defense is behind this. Yeah, it really is. They're playing much better on defense, and you got to give Greg Robinson, who took over from Andy Diaz, a lot of credit for this. He has come in and settled things down. Now, I talked to him about it. He said, you know, it was like drinking from a fire hose the first couple of days, but he's brought a great positive energy. Look at the turnaround and the numbers. And you ask, how did it happen? Well, Greg Robinson stresses fundamentals and techniques. They've gone back to the basics, and they, he also simplified things. Instead of guys having to see the whole big picture, he's got him focusing on the man in front of him, and that has really helped things. And, and then he's added some, some uh, exotic zone pressures that have made tremendous plays for him. And, and then also the other thing, the big part, they feed off of his positive energy. And Greg Robinson's been around the college game and the pro game, highly successful, and he told us yesterday, I took the job to help Mac. He's not in it for the glory. He's in it because he saw need there when he was asked to do the opportunity. He didn't get a lot of time to think about it either. Max said, you got to do this right now. I need an answer from you immediately. And Greg Robinson's answer was, OK, I'll do it and I'll help out. And after the old Miss game, which was certainly a difficult adjustment, the Longhorns have adjusted well as they're greeted by the faithful. Here they come. Case McCoy leading him out along with his Longhorn teammates and his story also one of the finest comeback stories maybe in a long time having a childhood disease that nearly incapacitated him to now where he is in charge of this football team. And we had the opportunity to talk about Case McCoy with him yesterday. We'll get you more of that in just a second. But one of the things we gathered from speaking to players yesterday is how happy they are to be home. Yeah Dallas isn't that far away when they took care of the Red River rivalry and the dominating win over Oklahoma but to be back in this stadium with your fans and there's only just a little bit of blue here it's all the burnt Texas orange that makes this an exciting place to play college football and while the Jayhawks are a team that have struggled and they've been good defensively at times they have not allowed a touchdown on an opening drive against them so far this season and they like to start fast they have started fast they've been close in games in the first half and the second half is where Kansas has had their problems, probably due to inferior depth. And, of course, they played some pretty good football teams. Mac Brown is standing by with Kaylee Harting on the field. Kaylee? Thanks, Dave. Coach Brown, 42 days since this home crowd has seen your Longhorns. How do you describe the biggest difference in the team between then and now? We have a better identity. We know more who we are on offense and defense. Uh, and I would think more confidence, Kaylee. And no matter what that confidence level may be, this team not one to forget this game in Lawrence a year ago. How have you used that game to motivate this team today? We were 6-2 and two going into that game last year. They outplayed us. They outcoached us. They were more physical than us. We've learned to handle adversity. Today, we'll see if we've learned to handle success. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Kaylee. Dave. All right, Kaylee, thank you very much. Now, we talked a little bit about Case McCoy. We had a chance to talk with him yesterday. Talk about confidence. He said, I know I started the Ole Miss game here, but that didn't feel like my start because David Ash wasn't 
hurt. It was hurt. He was not the number one quarterback then. He feels like now he is the number one quarterback. He really is the number one quarterback, and they've created a whole new identity on this offense around him being that quarterback. They're protecting him by, by running the football, pounding it up in there, and then letting him do what he does. And, and his strength is, you know, he's a coach's son. He's a football savant. He's extremely smart about what he does out there. So he gets him in great plays. You know, he checks him to, to where they need to be, and then he's extremely good at throwing the deep ball. And they're taking deep shots with him. And, and I, the other biggest thing, Dave, is they are they have his back. Mm -hmm. The confidence that they have in him right now, that's a powerful thing. It also never hurts your quarterback to have a great running game, which Texas has. We were here at the beginning of the year. We talked about the potential for this run game. Now the last couple of weeks, we're seeing it. And Jonathan Gray is the principal attack beast it, here. He is. He's a hammer. Jonathan Gray will pound at you and hit you and keep coming. And then the offensive line is picked up on that. And they're playing extremely well also. Yeah, so for Texas, we've talked about their confidence. You wonder what Kansas is feeling like. They know how their struggles have been this year. And they they don't have a number one quarterback. We're going to see both quarterbacks, to be honest with you, Ray. I'm not sure how that's going to work today. Well, it's going to start out with Jake Heaps, and Jake Heaps is a drop back type quarterback. They'll run the power eye with him back there, a little play action, and then three step drops. But then they bring in the true freshman, Montel Kozar. Now he's exciting. They're going to run the football with him. You're going to see zone read, quarterback draws. They'll run a little option down in the red zone. They'll run a sweep with him. They expect him to be able to just bust it out and make plays and get things rolling for that Jayhawk offense. And for you Longhorn faithful of that Jake Heaps guy looks familiar to you. He ought to. He was here two years ago playing quarterback for BYU in a game on September 10th 2011 where Texas made a second half rally to defeat a very stubborn Cougars team. Kansas won the toss and deferred so the Longhorns will get the football first. Unbelievable that they have not played a game in the stadium in 42 days. And there's no place like home, Dave. And you can feel the energy and talking with the guys getting ready for this game yesterday. Every one of them very excited about being back home in front of their own fans. Nobody more so than Mac Brown, who spent part of his Friday, in addition to talking to us, helping with two track athletes. Not many coaches would do that on a Friday before a game. Kendall Sanders to Jay Johnson back deep for the Longhorns. And we thank you for making us part of your college football Saturday. This will be Johnson. He gets to the edge. He's got speed. And he's tripped up with a good run back all the way down to about the 42-43 yard line. And here making his 11th start after that 41-yard return is the senior from Graham, Texas, Case McCoy. In case McCoy has actually never won a game here at home as a starting quarterback. This is his first opportunity to do so. And they expect him to lead this football team. And he's got the intangibles that we already talked about, Dave. It's going to be fun to see his confidence and where it's at here this afternoon. Jonathan Gray is a tailback. You see Johnson going in motion. They hand off to Gray. And he'll get one yard tripped up. By the middle of the defense, Jake Love in there on the stop as we get you for our Chick-fil-A impact players of the game. And Keith Oscastino is the best defensive lineman for the Jayhawks. And then Jonathan Gray and Jeff Swain, the tight end, who is an honorary offensive lineman of late. Those are the impact guys for Texas. The Jay Johnson catching a five-yard pass out to the 48-yard line. So the third down and about four set up here for the Texas offense. They've been 43% third down so far this season. They're going to mark him to the 49, call it 33. Middle of the field is open, and it's going to be a first down for the Longhorns into Kansas territory. Mike Davis with his 30th catch, his 179th as a Longhorn, gain a five, first down. Good patience there by Case McCoy. He waited for that underneath coverage to clear out of the way before he threw the ball. And Texas comes out slinging middle of the field and that is intercepted by Isaiah Johnson Kansas plus four in turnovers that's unusual for a team with a losing record and that was a 50 50 ball and Kansas comes away with it and McCoy's throwing to a spot here and now I don't know if this is on the receiver or him it's a great play by Johnson I will tell you that as he, he saw this the throw steps in front Here's McCoy. You see a little bit of a fake there. He's reading the coverage. He throws the line right there. 
and Johnson had no idea that the defender was there in front of him. And you see him kind of slow down the route a little bit there. That's what caused that interception. I'm going to have to put that one on the receiver more so than the, than the quarterback. So here is Jake Heaps, the former Brigham Young Cougar. He'll have James Sims, number 29, who's a very good tailback with him. And at the moment, he can't get his guys in the right place. Still time, though, on the play clock to get rid of it. And he'll screen it off to Sims here. Sims gets one good block and gets a first down out to the 44-yard line before Steve Edmond brought him down. 15-yard game. Jake Heaps, a veteran quarterback. You see he transferred from BYU. He's played in this stadium against Texas, so that shouldn't overwhelm him in any way, shape, or form. And he's done a great job as a leader of this football team, you know. For him to have to split time with a true freshman quarterback, some guys, they might go south in terms of attitude when you get that kind of thing. Not Heaps. He's Montel Cozart's biggest fan. Brandon Bourbon and Sims in the backfield for Kansas. And this will be Sims. Uh, Texas waiting for him. He'll get a yard. That'll be about it. Adrian Phillips up from his safety position in there on the stop. Second out of nine coming up. Adrian Phillips has played really well in this resurgence of the Longhorn defense. They've moved him around. He plays some middle linebacker in their dime package. He's all over the field. Had the big fumble recovery last week, setting the tone early against TCU. I like the way he plays. He, he's done an extremely good job keeping things going. He screams it again. Same play as the first play from scrimmage, and Sims busts loose. Collision by Edmund knocks him out of bounds, but Sims gets into Texas territory. And they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 35-yard line, a 21-yard pickup. Little screen play, little action that they're going to run, and you see Texas slants a little bit. Pressure's on. But the defensive backs have to get up quicker and make that play. And then linebacker didn't show up either. Good execution by Kansas and nice calls by Charlie Weiss here early on. Sims now with 15 catches on the year for over 100 yards. And Sims again. Sims first down. Lowers his head and he gets to the 30. Before brought down by Michael Thompson, the junior from San Antonio. That's a 15-yard gain. And another Jayhawks first down. Here it is, just the linebackers you see, the, the great blocking there. Santos had nowhere, couldn't get through the traffic. And right now, this Kansas offense is executing extremely well. And Texas is on their heels. And this is not how they wanted to start this football game. They knew Kansas comes out early. They, they've led games early on, and uh, they throw a punch. And that play collapses. Looks like it'll be a false start. Ball start. Offense, number 61. Five-yard penalty. First down. Our first visit with Dan Romeo, our referee today. Penalty on Pat Lewandowski, the left tackle. And those are the things that, when you're not winning, seem to get magnified. You know, you're driving the ball nicely, moving down the field. You got the defense on the heels. And then all of a sudden, now you're first and 15. Those mistakes are killers. Darian Miller, number six to the left of the quarterback, is now the tailback. And they go to him. He won't get very far. Tripped up. The middle of that Texas line has played well, but Cedric Reed is the only defensive lineman in the Big 12 to lead in tackles. Tremendous, tremendous possible Sunday talent, but he's only a junior out of Cleveland, Texas. Yeah, we asked him about that, and he said he didn't even know until somebody had told him. And, you know, Jordan Hicks got injured, and he was the leading tackler prior to that, so he, he did point that out as well. Uh, played the humble card on us, but he's a very good football player. That time he shot the inside gap and forced the running back to try and make too drastic of a cut. Second and 16. Jeff Coat putting the heat on the quarterback, but he's able to get it out to about the 14-yard line. Christian Matthews, a senior from Arlington, making the catch. It's a 12-yard gain. It'll be third and about three. You see a little play action. You're going to see Jeff Coat showing up from the backside. He's going to get the hit, but not until the ball gets out. But these things will add up. And Texas has done a great job of getting after the quarterback since Greg Robinson took over. In those four games, they've had 16 sacks. In the previous games, previous three, just two. 
Kansas is 114th in the nation in scoring at just a little under 18 points a game. Let's see if they don't get the third down what the decision is. Heaps. And they won't. It'll be fourth down and three. Trey Parmalee, the intended receiver. It looks like the field goal team's going to come out. Matthew Wyman, the freshman. Boy, Parmalee was wide open. If Heaps is able to put that ball on him, he's probably into the end zone as the underneath coverage from Texas jumped across it. When you're playing zone, you got to let those guys cross in front of you knowing that someone else is coming at you. 31 yards from Wyman. That 52-yarder you saw there was a walk-off winner against Louisiana Tech. Looks like he hooked it. He did. Way wide left. So Texas does not pay for the McCoy interception. They'll get the football back. And there's something about the mojo of being at home. The Texas defense bends but doesn't break. And then they get the good luck of a missed field goal. Texas football on Longhorn Network is powered by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. Oh, the weather here is so spectacular today, and the tailgating scene matching that. Meantime, Kansas had the opportunity with the Wyman fairly easy, you'd think, 31-yard field goal. And a little bit of pressure may have forced the miss. Yeah, you watch Jackson Jeffcoat get the big hand up there, and does he touch it? I, I do not know. It didn't really affect it a whole lot if he did, but it's still a miss. Well, that, that's close. I don't know if he got a pinky on it or, or what, but nonetheless, that's a big miss early in the ball game as Texas dodges that bullet. Jonathan Gray back into tailback, second possession for Case McCoy and the offense. Two tight end set that Texas has used a lot of since they changed the identity. Straight ahead, Gray. He got hit right away. Got picked up two. The middle of the line for Kansas. Ty McKinney on the stop. They went the junior college route to help repair this defense. And this group is pretty good. Yeah, the, Charlie Weiss said, hey, that's the strength of my defensive football team. You, you got some big, stout guys up in there that would really do a nice job. You can't move them very good on double teams. That'll be a challenge for the Longhorns this afternoon. Got double tight ends right down here. And a flip. Johnson, if he gets loose, forget about it. He's tripped up outside the 35-yard line. His speed is just ridiculous. A gain of 16 and a Longhorns first down. And great blocks by Greg Daniels and Jeff Swain, the two tight ends on, over there on the edge. Watch these guys take out their men. You get the hook block by Daniels and then the downfield block by Swain. That's good stuff, and that's why they're running the ball so well, the addition of those guys to the running game. Short gain there. Ben Heaney, who's in the game, number 31 for Kansas, and is uh, their top linebacker who was questionable with an injury in there on the stop along with Tadari and Johnson. It'll be second down and eight. McCoy off the play action a little bit underthrown fans here looking for a flag they're not going to get it Mike Davis was the intended receiver third and eight is next and that's what Texas has been doing hammering the football and then coming with play action pass to the outside you see Mike Davis he's covered up extremely well there by Ja'Cory Shepard Shepard sixth in FBS with nine pass breakups coming into the ball game did a nice job covering and anticipating the play action And McCoy is a pretty good runner here looking for that marker gets rid of it and it is incomplete. I believe he was past the line of yes. scrimmage when he threw that football. Dave. I am sure he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw that football. I was surprised he did that. Kendall Sanders was the receiver but had he caught it it wouldn't have mattered. Now if any part of his body is behind the line. Legal forward pass. No he's Offense, definitely number passing. six was beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. Five-yard penalty, loss of down, fourth down. 
So a little bit of a shaky start for the Longhorns on offense. McCoy with an interception and that mistake there. And a very good punt returner for Kansas, Connor Embry, number seven in the nation, at just over 15.1 per return, stands back in single safety position. And Farrell, line drive punt. Emory's got a chance to do something, though he doesn't. Excellent coverage by the Longhorns. And Kansas will take over following that 37-yard punt and one-yard return. The tackle by Adrian Colbert. You enjoy the skyline of Austin. Remember last year's game? About a year ago in Lawrence, Kansas. Texas was ranked number 24. They were 3-2 in the Big 12. The Jayhawk, Jayhawk offense got going early. Kansas led of the half 14-7. Kansas lost to Fumble in the third. They were able to take a 17-14 lead, but then the one-yard touchdown captained by Case McCoy in the final second. And Texas beat Kansas 21-27 to extend Kansas's misery in the Big 12. And perhaps a similar start. So far, the Texas offense struggling just a little bit. We mentioned, though, Kansas has yet to allow any points on opening drives this season. They didn't hear. In fact, they intercepted Case McCoy. And Kansas comes out the tunnel with their hair on fire, Dave. They played extremely well early in ball games. It's the, the lack of depth, really, that kind of wears them down as things go. They get, things get away from them a little bit. The average play for Kansas on their opening drive was nine yards. Heaps underneath caught the 30 yard line by Mundine that to the 35 and it takes three tacklers including Reed and Dalton Santos it'll be second down and two as Chick-fil-A brings us another look at impact players and for Kansas Rodriguez Coleman had a big game last week caught a touchdown pass first of his career James Sims the running back a lot of people don't know about him he's outstanding we saw him in the first drive uh, touch the ball for four straight times and and already has uh, what uh, 51 yards total in this ball game and then uh, for the Texas defense Adrian Phillips he's playing outstanding pretty busy looking backfield they give it to Sims trying to cut back for the first down breaking a couple of tackles he's right at the mark you see Phillips on top of him number 17 and he had a lot of help from his mates that is very close to a first down you're going to see the pursuit of the Texas defense coming around the corner right there. First guy to show up, and then the hats come. And you got a lot of hats around the football. Look at all that orange. And that's been one of the big things about Greg Robinson. And he keeps it positive. He says, you know, you guys are, are running. You're not quite there yet as far as your effort to the football, but you're going to get there. <laughs> and the guys kind of laugh. They say, he, that's one thing he says to them constantly. You're going to get there. And he'll give Sims a first down. You see what he's done so far on the ground. Keeps the time pass rejected. There's a swat. It'll be second down and ten. Big Chris Whaley with the knockdown. And Whaley has really picked up his ball game of late, along with Malcolm Brown in the middle there. And this is fortunate for Texas because there was a receiver open and down the field. And Whaley breaks this one up at the line of scrimmage, just swats that ball down. He's been playing extremely well. You know, he's an interesting character. He started out as a running back here at Texas, moved to tight end, and now he's finally found a home down there right in the middle of all the action. And a little flip to Brandon Bourbon, and he'll get maybe two yards. Flag is down. You saw both Michael Thompson and Adrian Phillips around the football. We'll see what the marker's all about. Kansas going with a little bit of misdirection there. Yeah, you're not going to make a lot of hay trying to outrun the Texas defense. You see illegal motion as the preliminary call. Texas being asked if they want to make it first and 15 or second and eight. I'm going second and eight myself. We'll see what Mac decides to do. Illegal motion. Offense, number 41. Penalty is declined. Third down. One thing I've noticed here, Ray, is that Kansas, just about every run play has been going to the right side of their offensive line. And a lot of that, they pulled their left guard around Malu uh, Fasu Malohi, and he is their best offensive lineman. So they've got him leading the way from that left guard position over to the right. And they correct it. It's third down and eight. Third and eight. Pete steps up, takes the underneath route, and I'm not sure that Bourbon got the mark. You can see the official on the on your screen. It is short. 
Carrington Bynum on the stop. Interesting call here for Kansas. You don't have far to go here. That was a really nice tackle by Bindum. Watch him. He's got one man in coverage, and he comes up and makes a short tackle. Hits the guy low, wraps him up. Yeah, that's a lost art in the game of football, especially by guys that play that cornerback position. Like they're going for it here. Or maybe they'll try to just draw Texas offside. We'll see what Charlie Weiss and company have in store. And timeout called by Kansas. First charge timeout, Kansas. Charlie Weiss blinked. And the decision is punt. Charlie Weiss said the play clock was down to one when they called the timeout. So they bring out Trevor Pardula. You just saw he had 11 punts last week. Uh, I, I'll be honest. Uh, my team is two and five. We haven't won a Big 12 game in a couple of years. I would have gone for it. But also, Ray, I don't have Super Bowl rings. Charlie Weiss does. This is a spectacular punt inside the 10. And they're going to mark it down at the seven yard line for making the eight for the Longhorns. But you want to hear what Mac Brown has to say about the game versus Kansas? Check out the Mac Brown press conference Monday, 11 a.m. exclusively on LHN. I'm going to counterpoint your point on that one, Dave. I think things are going well for this football team right now. They, they're playing good. Uh, there's no sense in letting Texas get the emotion of a fourth down stop and turn the tide, so to speak. Punt them deep and play some more defense. You've been doing well. So yeah. I'll go with Charlie on this one. That's fair. That's fair. Malcolm Brown is now the tailback, number 28 for the Longhorns. On the left side overthrown. Good coverage so far from the corners. They're trying to go with Mike Davis, and Ja'Cory Shepard has been with him every step of the way. It'll be second and ten. And Case McCoy, he checked into this play. He saw that he had one-on-one -on -one coverage there, and this is the second time now they've tried Ja'Cory Shepard over there with Mike Davis on him, and Shepard's, uh, he's won them both so far. Just trying to run away from it. But Brown, a little hole popped up there. It's about a nine yard gain. Good run by the junior from Cibolo, Texas. He is brought down by Victor Simmons. It'll be third down and short. And McCoy saw Isaiah Johnson kind of blitz from the safety position. He changed the run to the opposite side. I'm not sure what he saw, but that's a great check by the quarterback, McCoy, to get him away from that blitz. And a penalty on Texas. There was a flag completely Check, away from the out. play. Correction, half the distance. Mac Brown would like an explanation since that flag was on the other sideline. And he might probably be happy with the explanation, but he understands it. So take away that nice gain, and it's going to be second down, and the ball back to the four yard line. 14 to go. A tough place to generate your offense from. I don't want to take a lot of chances down here. on the ground and disappearing into the crowd out to maybe the six yard line and a little pushing after the play with the official breaking up quickly so it's going to be third and at least 13 maybe 12 for Texas so the decision at the moment does look like a, a bright one for Charlie Weiss Texas is or excuse me Kansas is packing the box they had eight men in the box for that last one Clint Bowen the defensive coordinator is he wants to stop the run today and that, that's how you stop Texas right now stop the run McCoy screens it. This is Brown. Has one man in front of him, but he won't get the first down. Pushed out of bounds by Ja'Cory Shepard, 24 in white for Kansas. And he had some other mates with him, too. Ben Heaney, 31, was also around. So Texas takes a little. At least the putter won't be in the end zone after that 70-yard gain. A nice uh, recovery by Shepard. He was a little bit out of position and then was able to fight off the block, get over there, and, and make a shoestring type tackle. Well, he will be in the end zone by a couple of steps. Anthony Ferris' first punt, though, not his best, and a little contact there. Let's see if the flag comes out. It does. It's going to be a first down either way, whether it's running into uh, the kicker or the personal foul variety. 
I don't think it's a personal foul. But I think that uh, Billy Owens was just a little anxious. That's a bad penalty. Running into the kicker. Defense. 18. Five-yard penalty. Yardage gives him a first down. Got his numbers backwards, but it's going to be a first down for the Longhorns. Take a look at it. You see fair the snap a little bit to his left, but he just goes through like normal, and uh, you just can't do that. Uh, that's again, that's part of losing football. You know, you had a, you got a great opportunity. You stopped them, backed up, and you're going to get the ball in decent field position, and then inexplicably you run into a kicker. See if Texas can take advantage of it. The flip to Johnson got one block to the 20 the 24 and that's going to be about it begin a six second and four coming up there's Heaney in there again a key part of the Kansas defense Dexter Linton also on the stop yeah Heaney was a game time decision for Kansas and he makes a huge difference with this defense the way he plays in that middle linebacker position he can get to anything on the field Pumped it. That is inside screen. Johnson again, and he's hurled it down by Ben Goodman, a sophomore from Beaumont. A lot of Texans on this Kansas roster, but it's going to be a first down following the game of nine. Another nice check by McCoy. He saw what was coming. You're going to see Heaney, the linebacker. He's going to come up and blitz, and so McCoy's going to throw behind the blitz. That's what you always want to do. Yeah, there's a void there behind a blitz, and McCoy finds it, sees it, had the right play dialed up, and had a nice little play. Case is six of nine for 49 yards. And on the ground, Brown picked up as he gets outside the 35 to about the 36 yard line. Tackle made by Ja'Cory Shepard. Second down, we'll call it seven. One thing that I, I've noticed by, by about this Texas offense, they're much more patient now. They'll keep running it at you. Well, it works because they've got depth at the backfield and they've got very good offensive linemen. Another short gain for Brown. It'll be third down, and we'll call it four, maybe five. Goodman in there on the stop again. I think early in the year they felt, hey, we got all this talent. We can, you know, we should have big strike capability, and they were trying to hit those big plays without establishing things first. Now they're very patient with the run. They'll continue to hammer you, and then at the opportune time, that's when they'll take their shots. This might even be a running down here. Shipley coming at you in motion. Pressure from Kansas. McCoy gets it loose. There's Shipley. First down, Texas. Shy of the 50 yard line. Tackle made by Dexter Linton. Gain of seven. You got a little rub route, really, from the outside. You have the inside receiver going deep to clear it out. Shipley cuts underneath into that void in the wake of it, if you will. And wide open right there. The man to man coverage can't get there in time. 31 straight. Gain for the reception for Jackson Shipley. Contact made by Kansas. You know, can't, uh, Texas has been away for quite a while, and because of that, they've been using the tap snap in order to tap snap the football. Today, they're going on cadence, and, and Case McCoy is using his voice, and they have a veteran offensive line. They can offside defense. defense moved into neutral zone, causing the offense to react. Five yard penalty, first down. They can do things with the cadence. Here, let's take a listen to it. First and five. And there's Shipley again. Good block down the field by Mike Davis. Allows Shipley to get the first down. Courtney Arnick and Ja'Cory Shepard on the first uh, tackle. And it'll be first and ten for the 40. Just a little bubble screen to the outside. Zip it out there. Perfect timing on the throw and a good block. And about a three-yard gain that time on first down. Second and seven coming up. Kevin Young among the tacklers. For Kansas, Keon Stowers also. Malcolm Brown getting the work in this drive. We've seen Jonathan Gray already. 11th play of the drive coming up as we wind down the first quarter. 0-0. Zero, zero. Watch the blitz coming from up there. And they lay out of it. There's another deep pass down the left side. It's overthrown. And 
this is becoming a, a game between Davis and Shepard. Yeah. Third and seven, and so far, Shepard is undefeated. I called uh, Case McCoy the, the mad bomber all week because of the way he loves to throw the ball down the field, and they're going to keep doing it. But now watch him with the football. See how he's holding it low, and he brings it down before he throws it? Uh, they're not going to teach you that that's the way to do it. But there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Shipley's open, stumbling a bit of the 15 yard line. He'll get inside the 10 down to the six. Tackle finally made by Victor Simmons and Shipley a little bit hobbled after the 31 yard gain. This is a great route by Shipley. Watch the fake and the hedge and shoulder shake that he gave right there at the top of that route. That froze the defender and gave Shipley, uh, in fact, it knocked the defender down. It was such a good move and it gave Shipley the room to get open. See what Shipley's done all on this drive. Power eye here. Down to the four yard line with Malcolm Brown. Simmons in there on the stop. Might be the final play of the quarter unless Texas wants to play fast. Here's Shipley and find out what happened to him here. It's hard to say. You see guys stumble and fall and nobody touches them. And well, you, you hate to see something like that happen. No contact even. We'll see if he's okay. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Kansas had one opportunity to score. They missed a 31-yard field goal. The Longhorns are in the red zone. For this year, they've made 10 touchdowns out of 19 appearances. Will that percentage get any better? We'll see when we return to DKR. Just a few moments ago, Jackson Shipley hobbled off the field. Let's get more on that from Kaylee Hartung down on the field. Dave, the Texas training staff is inspecting Jackson Shipley's right ankle. They've taken his sock and shoe off. They now have him sitting on top of a box, taping the ankle up. He was able to walk from the bench to behind the bench to sit on this box without much pain in his face. We will keep an eye on him. All right, thank you, Kaylee. First play of the second quarter coming up. I'm Dave Lamont, joined by Ray Bentley, and Kaylee is our eyes and ears on the field. Here at DKR, first home game in 42 days for the Longhorns. And no score, but Texas in good position here on second and goal. And off Brown. And he'll only get to the two yard line. Michael Reynolds, 55, jumped on top of Brown to keep him from getting into the end zone. Third down and goal from the two. This might be a good time for a little play action pass. They, they've established the fact that they're going to hammer and run the football. That's always very difficult for defenders to cover down in this area because they're playing that run so intently. As you see the numbers on this drive, a good one here for the Texas offense. Well, they brought in 66 Cedric Flowers for some extra beef. They took out Kendall Sanders. And off. And right behind the beef, it's a Texas touchdown for Malcolm Brown. Texas overloaded that side. They had four guys with their hands in the dirt there on the left. And the key block there was the big one by uh, Trey Hopkins. And he, he just moved himself over there to left tackle. And he just pushed his man out of the way. Ray road graded him. And that was a huge hole. And easy walk-in touchdown for Brown. Charlie Weiss thought it was a better idea to punt. He got a punt down to the eight-yard line. But didn't work anyway. 15 plays, 92 yards, 6 minutes and 29 seconds, and Texas takes the 7-0 lead on the Jayhawks. Texas football on Longhorn Network is brought to you by the Callaway House Austin, the premier off-campus freshman residence, now leasing for fall 2014. You can get some incredible food in Austin, Texas, but the hottest food item in this town in the last week, chicken fingers. Uh, they make a great uh, rain delay snack from what I understand. It. And there's the man right there, Jeff Madden. And he was responsible maybe for the, uh, the decision and the action that made that TCU victory happen last week during that long, long delay in Fort Worth. Bourbon and Miller back deep for KU. And this is Miller. Now one block, he needed a lot more than that. Great coverage 
by the Texas special teams. It'll be poor field position as Bergeron in there on the stop. And uh, chicken fingers was a big topic on this campus this week. Everyone's talking about those chicken fingers. I think that was a game changer for us. It was different. You know, we had never done that. Just kind of relaxed, and they fed us a little bit. We were able to feed the guys uh, a little snack and give them something to eat. And Mac Brown said, you know what? That's what it takes to win a game? Give them chicken fingers. Yeah, let them eat chicken fingers. And I got to tell you, as a growing boy, I can, you're hungry when you're sitting around for that long. And they needed some sustenance, and it made a huge difference for them. All right, number two, Montel Cozart is now the quarterback for Kansas. We knew he was going to play some today. How much, we don't know yet. Different approach than with Heaps. There's a shovel pass and a good hit at the 20-yard line. James Sims took it at Dalton Santos with a clean hit. A gain of six, second and four. Santos comes from a long ways away. Here he is all the way over here. Watch how he tracks the football and gets over there into the action. Here he closed down, and now he delivers the hit. That's that's a bona fide tackle right there from the big linebacker. He says, that's right, give me a couple of helmet slaps. Sims 59 yards total so far. Here's Cozart, just a freshman out of Kansas City. And it's Sims. He's running a long way to get to the outside. He'll lose a yard. Malcolm Brown over 90 squashing that play that seemed like that play was never gonna finish And Malcolm Brown has really been playing extremely well Also watch the big nose guard get through there He just beats the man and then runs down the line of scrimmage and finishes the play he even got a little push there From Mike Smithberg to help him make the tackle so call it third down and five for the Jayhawks 29 percent third downs this season 115th in the country. Kansas struggles to score. They go to Bourbon. Needs a block. Got the block. First down, Kansas. And knocked out of bounds in KU territory by Duke Thomas at the 30 yard line. Good block by Sims to set up that 10 yard gain. Sims, not only can he run the football, he can throw a block for you as well. Watch him come out and lead the traffic here. And right there, that, that's that's what you need to do. He ended up putting Michael Thompson on his back. Charlie White says Sims will play a long time on Sundays. Charlie would know. First and ten, they marked him down to the 29, not the 30. And back on the ground, this time Bourbon runs left, and he'll get four to the 33-yard line. Here's Charlie Weiss in his second season at Kansas. And he made some changes in the way he coaches this team this year. Yeah, and, and when he came in there, he, he uh, cleaned house. They had 29 guys immediately. He, he basically got off of the football team, and he's emphasizing discipline and toughness first. And really, that's how you build a program. Uh, everything will follow behind that, and that's been his point of emphasis with this Kansas outfit. Well, his family is in South Bend, Indiana. He is sleeping in his office right now. Straight ahead, nothing. Third and six coming up. Jackson, Jeff Coat, and Cedric Reed. Two ends, two really good ends. Stop that play for nothing. And we had the chance to talk to both of those guys together and the way they play off of each other and, and work with each other. You can see the camaraderie that they have and the respect that they have for each other and the joy that they have playing together. And they, they enjoyed that one right there, a little sandwich for the two of them. And you can't help but think how great this defense could be if Jordan Hicks were around. It's a major loss. But other players like Dalton Santos and Steve Edmond have stepped up. Bad snap. Cozart's just going to have to eat this back at the 18-yard line. And Texas holds. You know, you think about these are the things that happens when you're losing. You had the Texas touchdown drive. Doesn't happen if there's not a running into the kicker penalty. Now you have this on third and a manageable distance. And Gavin Howard to center. This is only his fourth game at playing center. And and that, those snaps are the hardest thing to get consistent. And that one, he was worried about cutting off the nose tackle. And he just shot that ball off there a little errant. 15-yard loss, Ray. Fourth and 21. And you got to Jay Johnson waiting for this kick from Pardula. High kick. But Johnson's got some room to work. 35. Up the middle of the 43-yard line. Scary, spectacular returner. After the 53-yard punt, a 14-yard gain, and Justin McKay on the stop for the Jayhawks. 
Let's take a look back after Texas had gotten off to a slow start offensively. They found the right speed on a long drive. Yeah, and there were a combination of a lot of things here. DeJay Johnson making a play here, and then Shipley makes an incredible move and gets himself open. That was the biggest play of the drive, and then to finish it off, a huge hole behind the block of Trey Hopkins springs Malcolm Brown into the end zone. Best starting field position for Case McCoy. He's got Jonathan Gregg in the backfield. Don't see Shipley back on the field yet. And it'll be Gray. Has a little bit of work here. To the 15, he'll get into Kansas territory before he's brought down by Dexter Linton. A gain of eight, second to two is next. Nice counter punch there by Major Applewhite making that play call. They've shown uh, to Jay Johnson twice now coming that sweep motion. This time they faked it to him and gave Gray the chance. And Gray, big hole. Gray up the middle, first down, and maybe more. Gets behind Davis, and he couldn't quite get loose. A touchdown saving tackle that time by Cassius Sendish. 21 yards on the pickup. Mason Walters does a great job of making this block on the linebacker to spring that one. Texas going quickly here. McCoy back on the ground. He's got Gray. Gray's got about three yards, maybe two yards. Good tackle that time by Ben Heaney, number 31. Here, here's your the big guy right here. And watch Mason Walters get the linebacker here and push Heaney right out of the hole. There he is. Bam. That opens it up. A nice double team down on the nose there. That's good blocking by that Texas offensive line. Second down and eight. Jackson Shipley back on the field, number eight in Burke Orange. And it's Gray. And that offensive line is moving bodies now in between the 21 and 22 yard line for a five yard gain. Jordan Tavai in there on the stop. Here comes a very interesting third down, Ray, because you've got what, about three yards? You're running the ball well. And in this field position, I, I stick it on the ground. And I'll tell you who's doing an excellent job right now, too, is the center, Dominic Espinosa. He is handling the nose guard by himself. If you can do that, you've got something going. And indeed, back to the ground. And it's just short of the first down. You can see it yourself. Heaney in there on the stop, number 31. And a decision for Mac Brown here on fourth and short should be what? No decision. He's going for this one. Take a look at the run here, a little cut back there. But they're going to go for this one. And you're right. And they go quickly. And it's going to be close. Well, that's all about the spot yeah. right well, there. If you see the official, I always look at the official comes in from the top of the screen. And if that holds, he didn't make it. Love and Heaney in there on the stop. Kansas says we held him. Well, I think they did. Texas is only three out of 12 on fourth downs this year. The officials would like to measure to be sure, but yeah, that, that yellow line is not official. We have to remind ourselves of that at times. How about Love there, 57, sophomore from Oklahoma, in there on the stop. Yeah, Love came up strong and gets in the hole, and then and then Heaney also he grabbed the face mask and kind of got away with it as he jumped on there and helped with finish the tackle. Survey says Kansas ball on downs. Charlie Weiss letting uh, the side judge know his unhappiness. Kansas opponents haven't hit a fourth down. And Charlie Weiss just unloading on the headlinesman. But you know what? Charlie may have got a break because watch that. The face mask uncalled. Seven nothing Texas here midway through the second quarter and the Kansas defense has been playing extremely well throughout the afternoon started early on here the interception on the first drive as Johnson steps in front of that one and then you've got great coverage by Ja'Cory Shepard on the outside and then that fourth down stop right there the, the most recent play in the Texas Kansas defense is flexing muscles here early on it's a respectable defense it is it is not the weakness of this Kansas team uh, and when you have a Heaney in the middle who had been out last week when they just got bombed by Baylor he they really missed his presence not only with his play but the calls and the way he sets things up for other guys Darian Miller into the tailback And they'll go to him. Flag is down, and it's going to be a loss on the play. Steve Edmond and Jackson Jeffcoat led the defensive parade. Let's see if this call is on the Longhorns or on the Jayhawks. 
Looks like holding on the Jayhawks. Cozart's still in there at quarterback, by the way. Holding. holding. Offense. Offense. Number 65. Half the distance to the goal. First down. The right guard, Mike Smithberg, caught holding on that particular play. And I'm waiting for uh, Cozart to pull the ball on this zone read. Take a look at the hold right there. Oh, he just totally grabbed and put the arm around the big defensive lineman, Hassan Ridgeway. You can't wrap your arm around the shoulders of a defender. They'll catch you with that one every time. Kansas in their first eight plays at 58 yards race. Since then, 11 plays just for 23. That is Cozart, and he'll pitch it on the old-fashioned option to Bourbon. That doesn't work at all. As Steve Edmond, the junior from Dangerfield, Texas, stops him after a gain of two. It's going to be second and very long. And inside linebackers, and here he is right here. Uh, they love to play the option. I know I did back in the day because a lot of times you're going to be free and you can run, go quarterback to pitch, whatever it is. And, and uh, that, that's uh, tailor-made right there for Steve Edmond. Edmond having to step it up with Hicks gone. And he has. You see why the numbers there. Those are trying to use his speed to get out of there, and he safely gets himself out of bounds at around the 17 yard line. We've talked quite a bit about Jordan Hicks. Kaylee has more. Dave, we're seeing Jordan Hicks on the sideline with his team for the first time since he left the Kansas State game with a ruptured Achilles. He had surgery the Wednesday following that game. And given the fact that Texas has been on the road ever since, he's not been able to travel. He is very happy, I am told, to be back here supporting his teammates. You talked about him, Ray, a couple of months ago. We met him, kind of a soft-spoken, quiet guy. Those are the most dangerous ones when they put him on the field. I, I really like his demeanor and the way he goes about his business, and he is definitely a part of the heart and soul of this Texas defense, sadly and sorely missed. Third and a dozen. Cozart, looks like he wanted to go deep. He's a good runner, but Texas is all over him. He won't get anywhere near there. There again is Steve Edmond, number 33, for the Longhorns. So Kansas will bring out Trevor Pardula, the junior from San Jose, for another punt. Texas play in zone. Cozart had nowhere to throw the thing deep. And then because they're in zone, those linebackers saw him break, and then they were able to coop and contain him. And Pardula, again, high kick. Johnson finds it in that daytime sun. But he is exciting. Even the six, seven yard returns have some juice to them. Texas with great field position. When we return, DKR, the Longhorns back home after 42 days. Sit down with Coach Mac Brown as he breaks down the Longhorn performance against the Jayhawks and then a preview of next week's game against the Mountaineers. Rewind with Mac Brown Monday at 7.30 on Longhorn Network with Ray Bentley and Kaylee Hartung. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you for joining us here on LHN. Bevo enjoying the shade. That's such a calm demeanor. Which is probably good for all of us. <laughs> yeah. Come to think of it. You hate to see him get riled up. No, huh? sir. First and ten following the punt and a return by Johnson. Malcolm Brown the tailback. But instead, a little forward pitch to Johnson. This time Kansas. Oh! Kansas was waiting to get him for a loss. Johnson manufactured two yards. It'll be second and eight. And Kansas is waiting for this one. You see they've got a lot of guys on the edge, but Johnson's able to make two of them miss. That was a pretty nice spin move right there. There for a second, and then gone. 105 all-purpose yards so far for Pflugerville's to Jay Johnson. Straight up the middle, just a little shy of the first down. And I remember at the beginning of the year, the coaches said, we're going to get the ball to DJ Johnson as often as we can. And Major Applewhite is not deterred or deferred from that philosophy. All right, Johnson was, was a, a blade of artificial turf from busting that one all the way. Just got tripped up. He was upset with himself. Felt he should have been able to maintain his balance through that hole. Third down and two forthcoming. Got your double tight ends right over here. Swain 82 with the play following him. Flag is down. First down if it holds up. Scouter Miles on the stop. 
Referee Dan Romeo. Offside. Defense. Number 55 lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Result is first down. And watch Jeff Swain. He's going to go in motion and then he's going to come up and he's going to make it a long day for a linebacker right here. Swain has just done an outstanding job. If I'm going to put it on one guy or another as far as uh, really changing the, the tempo in terms of the running game, Jeff Swain has been that guy. Only two catches for 12 yards. We made him an impact player. There's the pitch to Johnson. And Kansas is ready for that play. It'll be about a two yard gain. Isaiah Johnson in there on the stop. So it'll be second down and eight. One of the many junior college transfers that Kansas signed up. 20, I believe it is. And the other thing is, Charlie Weiss is optimistic about the future because of some of the folks he's not using this yeah, year. He's he, got players he's. He likes coming in. Yeah, he staggered that. He, he redshirted a bunch of them, so he'll get another influx of experienced talent next year. And they're running behind Swain that time. Inside to the 39-yard line. Kevin Young, number 90, after a two-yard gain. So here comes a third down and six. And you know who's had a quiet game? The quarterback, Case McCoy. He's been kind of quiet. He has, and he's doing what he, you know, what he, they're asking him to do. He's handing the football off, and they're pounding it at him. And then when, when the opportunities arise to make the throws, he's, he's uh, taking the shots downfield. Nothing's hit yet, but he made that real nice throw to Shipley that, that helped that touchdown drive for Texas earlier in this quarter. Yeah, three of those incompletions have been long one-on-one -on -one passes down the sideline to Mike Davis. This time, other way, caught there's Shipley again. There's a first down. Nice throw by McCoy. Isaiah Johnson on the stop, gain to 14, first down, Longhorns. And Chipley went out earlier with that injury, and he looked pretty good right there. And they can't cover him from off, and that's what they're trying to do. I think you have to get up on him and, and press him. Back on the ground. Oh, nice move that time by Brown. Brown inside the five. Tripped up by Dexter McDonald. Otherwise, Malcolm Brown would have been in the end zone. 21-yard gain, first down and goal, Texas. Well, there's an unblocked guy, Victor Simmons, number 27. Everyone else, they got a hat for a hat, so they tell the running back, all right, you got to get that guy in. Boy, he, Brown took care of him, no problem, and beat the man one-on-one -on -one in the hole and advanced the football. Alex Delatore now in the lead fullback position, number 36. And overload to the left side again, that's where they go. And Brown, starter step into the end zone, touchdown, Texas. Mason Walters gets the touchdown block on this one. Previously, it was Trey Hopkins, uh, the left guard. Now the, the right guard, Walters, he flips over to the left side to oh, get that overload, and he just pins his man and creates a huge hole. Watch the, the big fella right here. He's just going to turn his man. There's nobody in the hole left. Just an outstanding job up front by that offensive line. Also, Hawkins with a nice yep. block as well, Dad. That's what I was going to say, Ray. Donald Hawkins, 51. The tackle is the PAT is tagged on. In the last two games, Malcolm Brown with four touchdown runs. Two versus the Horned Frogs, and now two versus the Jayhawks. Malcolm Brown set up his own touchdown with this brilliant effort. Got it inside the five. One play later, follow the big man into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. 14-0 here at DKR. <laughs> Don't go anywhere at halftime because on LHN we'll have highlights of around the Big 12 and of course a good look at the first half from our Texas game day crew. There they are. Last second makeup touches uh, being applied of course. A couple of those guys get a little uh, touchy if they're not made up just right. Mm -hmm. Just like you I, from what I understand. Absolutely. I'm on LHN man. This is, I want to look good. <laughs> Texas is very balanced, uh, 95 yards rushing thus far, 115 on the pass. Miller and Bourbon back deep for Kansas. We'll see who the quarterback is going to be. We've seen a couple of series out of Jake Heaps and a couple of series out of Montel Cozart. Tough catch made by Miller on the run. Little hole opens up and closes as he gets out just shy of the 30-yard line. Duke Thomas with another special teams tackle. It'll be heaps back at a quarterback. How do you feel about this trading off quarterbacks that Kansas does right now? Well, I understand what Charlie Weiss is doing. He's got to 
you know, you got to get the young true freshmen some work in case something happens to Heaps, and then also the build for your future and, and where he wants to go with this offense. So I understand what he's trying to do. I don't know if it's going to help him win uh, right now, but down the road, and that's where his eyes are. Yeah, Heaps is a junior. I mean, he's got a year of eligibility left. A little screen patch here to Sims. Sims, good football player. He'll get about eight where he's brought down by Desmond Jackson, the junior from Houston, a second and a couple. And, I, and the, to answer your question, I think Charlie wants a mobile quarterback. I think he wants to, you know, be able to play up tempo and, and have that threat. And Heaps is not that guy. But we haven't seen Kozart show the ability to throw the ball yet, either. Heaps, he can throw it. That pass deflected. Dalton Santos got his hands on it. Probably thought he should have picked it off. It'll be third down and three. A yeah, great read and recognition by Santos. He saw the underneath receiver go out, so he drops back as you see Cedric Reed get a little pass rush there. But that's good recognition by Santos. He knew the one guy goes out, someone else is coming in behind me. Don't chase. Get some depth and get in that throwing lane. He did it to perfection. Fans getting on their feet here at DKR. Texas has all of their timeouts. If they get a stop here, Case McCoy will get the ball back with time and timeouts. Heaps under pressure, guns it. I don't know how that pass was hung on to by Parmalee. He got crushed, and hopefully he's going to be okay. He did not get the first down. It'll be fourth and a couple. Texas brought a weak side blitz. They brought Steve Edmond up the middle, and that allowed Reed to have a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and he just beats his man and then brings it home hard, and Heaps lands in a heap. And then another good hit on the backside as Dalton Santos makes a huge hit. The injured player is Trey Parmalee, the receiver, as he took a vicious hit and somehow was able to make the catch. Hopefully he'll be back up when we return. Timeout, Texas. First. There you see Trey Parmalee. His father, Bernie Parmalee, had a good run in the NFL, mainly with the Miami Dolphins as a running back and particularly known for his work on special teams. And I don't know if Trey will be able to get back into the game or not. Fourth down and short, and Kansas will punt again. Quandre digs this time back deep at around the 20-yard line. Bardula, not very high. And Diggs is going to point everybody get out of the way. But Cardillo is going to get a nice roll out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. So Case McCoy, they're going to say the 16. So Case McCoy's got a long way to go and two timeouts in a minute 92. There's a fantastic football player, Jordan Hicks. And I know Ray and I can't wait till he's able to get back on the field next year. And he was the leading tackler with this ball club before he had the injury. They've been tackling fairly well today. Let's take a look at some of these tackles in the open field. There's a little rundown there by Steve Edmond. And a great tackle there by Bindham. And then coming up, big hit. Another one there from the linebacker, Edmond. And then from behind, you got the big boy, Malcolm Brown, chasing him down. So far, four missed tackles on the day for Texas. And Texas on the ground with Gray getting no game. Well, we talked a little bit at the top of the show about Texas's improvement on defense from games first two, three, one, two, three to the last four. Even today, kind of a microcosm of that. In the opening drive, they gave up over seven yards per play. In the last four drives, they've given up 35 yards and just two yards per play. And you see one of the biggest and simplest reasons for their improvement. Yeah, and give Greg Robinson a lot of credit for that. Him and his entire staff for coming in and, and taking control of those fundamentals and the techniques to tackle the ball and ball carrier correctly. So Gray on the carry, it appears that Mac Brown has decided to run the half out. Now Kansas is going to take a timeout. They've got one left after this with 50 seconds to go. Charlie Weiss senses maybe he can get the ball back here. Ball at the 19-yard line. So Texas is going to have about seven to go. Yeah, that's a good call by Charlie Weiss. Defense has been playing well. Get a chance to possess the football again. Maybe, uh, maybe they can get something going and, and steal one before halftime. And there you see the time of possession. Not really a big deal here, but the number of plays is what really counts here. 
Well, Texas has gone into that hurry up mode throughout. They're playing at a fast pace. And that's, you know, when I talked to Mac Brown about the new identity of, of this football team offensively, he says we're, we're running the ball with power and also in a hurry up fashion. And then we're taking our deep shots and, and we're making big plays down the field. And those are the things that you know, they decided they had to do in order to keep uh, things moving with Case McCoy coming in at quarterback. They also have to protect him because behind him, you have Tyrone Swoops, a true freshman, who does not have a whole lot of work, a lot of experience. So if something happens to McCoy, they, they're put in a, in a tough situation. Now McCoy came in with his last 61 pass attempts, and he hasn't been sacked. Screen bubble, Johnson. And he won't make it. Good job. In fact, you could see that uh, Agostino tried to strip that football away. Heaney in there again. Kansas calls their final timeout. 48 seconds to go. A really nice play by Agostino. You know, he was on the pass rush there and a little stunt move, and he just kept playing and kept fighting and then found his way back in there to make a, make a play. Well, so far now, 78 straight passes for McCoy without being sacked, although he's not terribly happy with the way that turned out. You get Johnson with the football, you might think that's going to work out well, but again, Kansas's defense has been fairly stout. They have. They played extremely well thus far in this ball game. I think getting Heaney back is a huge part of that, and, and then they've, they've covered the edges particularly well. Ja'Cory Shepard has been up to the task and taken on Mike Davis on a couple of deep shots. Done a nice job. Embry back deep. He's a good return man. Ferris got to get it up high, and he might have cut that up the side of his foot. That's a terrible kick, to be honest with you. Kansas is going to get excellent field position here. They do not have a timeout, but they're going to get the football at the Texas 43-yard line. Only an 18-yard punt for Ferris, the senior. He is a good one, but just having a little bit of a tough time today. Yeah, he had been punting extremely well, averaging 42 yards per kick. And that one, yeah, you just never know. It's it's like playing a game of golf. You got a, a swing and a stroke, and some days it just ain't there. No, even the best golfers. Do. Yeah, you're the best golfers. Find the woods or knock at the water. Easily the best field position for the Jayhawks, and Jake Heaps will be the quarterback here. 41 seconds, no timeouts for Kansas. Under pressure, Heaps gets to be almost the first down marker, but there's a flag down at the 46 yard line in the area now they move it to midfield it might be holding the catch made by Justin McKay holding offense number 61 10 yard penalty first down Jackson Jeffcoat forces the hold here on the outside you see the inside move and uh, Lewandowski was not ready for that. The only thing he could do was just throw the arm bar across the neck. And anytime you get your arms out wide around a defender, uh, the officials are going to see that and they're going to call it. Yeah, you have to hope the official doesn't see it. It's hard to miss. Yeah, but he had no choice. If he doesn't do that, his quarterback's on his back. He steps up this time. Now he steps out of the pocket. And instead of sliding with his feet, he slides with his head. But he does get in, into Texas territory, the gain of six. Uh, Heaps is not real comfortable running the football, as you could just see. Or sliding. Second and 14. Middle of the field, broken up. With authority by Pondre Diggs and Nickelback. He's had a very good season in that position. And Diggs broke on the ball. It's perfect. Here he is. You see Diggs. He's reading the receiver, and then he gets his eyes back in time, gets a nice break on the football, and goes right to the point. 12 seconds left, third down and 14. Longest field goal for Wyman this season, 52. We would have to get to the 35 for that. But the clock wouldn't stop because it wouldn't be a first down. This kid's going to have to hail Mary this thing one-on-one. -on -one. And it is flags everywhere. The ball is caught by Rodriguez Coleman at the four-yard line. Let's see who gets flagged for interference. Uh, I think it's going to be Duke Thomas. And Thomas just never got his head around to find the football. And then at the end, panic. Fast interference. Defense, number 21. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a completed pass. First down. You only have four seconds and no timeouts. Take another look at it. And you saw he just never got his head around. And ball is spiked. 
Now Kansas can at least attempt a short field goal. Matthew Wyman is 0 for 1 today. Here's another look at the pass interference, and you see Thomas. He just never got his eyes around to find the football. Now, if you're going to commit pass interference, well, you got to make sure the guy doesn't catch the ball. Yeah. But that was an odd throw. I mean, notice how far that Coleman had to run to find that thing. Yeah, it was a duck for sure. <laughs> Those are the ones that get you sometimes. You can't get your head around to find the football. Wyman missed from 31 earlier. This from 10 yards closer. Now this is not Wyman. This is Doherty, and Doherty pops it through. So Wyman may have lost a job. It's Ron Doherty who puts the three on the board for Kansas, and this game is close. Kansas seems to always play the Longhorns tough. It'll be Kansas' option to receive the second half kickoff, and Kaylee is caught up with Mac Brown. Coach Brown, what's your reaction to that last minute of play? Well, it wasn't good. We are sitting in a position where we didn't manage the clock very well because we should have killed more time. We were trying to get down and score offensively. They used their two timeouts. Then we had them in a third and very long situation and let them throw a deep ball up and get it. So uh, the interception took a possession away from us where we probably would have scored. The fourth and one took a possession away, and we gave away three there. So uh, not playing very smart. Playing hard, got to come back out and do a better job second half. What did Kansas's defense do to stop you all from getting off to a fast start? Uh, I think it was more us than them, but give them credit. They put a lot in the box. We didn't handle it very well. Thank uh, you, like Coach. Like I said, the, when you get it, don't make a fourth in inches, and and you don't make uh, and you get a pass interception early. That doesn't help you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, Kaylee and Coach, thank you very much. 14 to three, our score here at the half. After the break, we'll go to Lowell Galindo and the game day crew for the Texas game day halftime report. Longhorns in front. In Texas, you think of the great music that's come out of here. Jimmy Vaughn and Stevie Ray Vaughn, of course, Jimmy Vaughn, the guitarist for the fabulous Thunderbirds, and Kim Wilson asking, Are we tough enough? Texas has been so far 14 to 3 over Kansas, as Kansas has not won a Big 12 game in the last 25 tries. Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont, and Kansas has hurt themselves several times. Yeah, you, you know what? That's what happens when you lose football games. You seem to find ways. The uh, running into the kicker led to another drive, the penalties that they've had. It's just a, an issue where they've hurt themselves. And then Texas has run the football consistently, Dave, but they haven't busted anything loose yet. I'm waiting for that to happen. And also, uh, Case McCoy has not made a big play yet, and we expect that to happen here in the second half. And let's get to field level. The third member of our team, Kaylee Hartung. Dave, on that last Kansas drive, everyone did their part. That's what Coach Weiss told me was most impactful about that field goal drive. Yes, of course, the momentum is nice to have, and it was good to have energy like that in the locker room, but it was the fact that everyone did their part. That being said, Coach Weiss told me where they have hurt themselves most or in those penalties in all three facets of the game. He said, yes, conversations were had to correct those errors. They've got to play error-free football from here on out. Hi, right, Kaylee, thank you very much. You think back to Texas's first touchdown Ray folks missed it it was set up by a running into the kicker penalty five yards but it was five yards enough to keep Texas alive and they drove down almost the length of the field after that some of the numbers in the first half we mentioned that Kansas has been a struggling football team right here at the bottom in virtually every offensive category and these numbers aren't going to help them well the biggest indicator of winning football games is the rush yards are you able to run and then stop the run and you see Kansas three to one or excuse me Texas three to one over Kansas here right now and then the turnovers Texas has the one that's also another big indicator and then the average start that one's dead even so there, there you have it that's why we have a relatively close ball game neither team has really busted out and done anything special. Some of the shadows beginning to form here at DKR, taking over the lower left end of the field around the, the goal line of the 30. And you'll see that right about now. There you go. Texas will kick it off. Bunch of Kansas struggling, 114th in points, 98th in rushing, 112th in passing, 117th in total offense, and 113th in penalties. Almost eight a game, and they have six already. Good kickoff. This will be Miller, and he'll take a knee. It'll be out of the 25-yard line. And who will the quarterback be? 
Will it be Jake Heaps? Will it be Montel Cozart? And it'll be Heaps who led them to that field goal with a long pass downfield to Rodriguez Coleman. So at the 25 yard line, Kansas will take over. Heaps is the thrower, Cozart's the runner. Kansas seems to be caught between the two identities. What do we want to do? Cozart has only thrown, game, came into the game throwing just 14 passes, four times, connected for 69 yards. One good idea for Kansas is give it to James Sims. The senior from Irving, Texas, picks up eight, second to two, and digs on the stop. Really nice vision by Sims there, seeing the, the gap there on the back side as the, the Texas defense got walled down inside. No, nobody there until you got to the second level. Diggs had to show up and make that tackle, but great vision there by Sims making that play. Only six carries for the leading rusher for Kansas. He's over 600 yards on the season. And I'm surprised we have not seen any eye formation power running game out of the Kansas Jayhawks. That's one of their staples. Heaps, middle of the field, wide open. Catch made to the 43-yard line by Coleman. Coleman almost scored a touchdown saving tackle that time by Carrington Bindham. That'll be a first down all the way to the Texas 25-yard line, a 42-yard pickup. Michael Thompson just takes a bad angle from the middle of the field. He's got the deep middle. You're going to see him at the end of this thing overrun it right there. He's the one that slipped and slid, and that's his responsibility. He's got to be able to take a good angle and even be there when the ball is in that seam route. So Coleman gets a rest. Two catches, 85 yards. Heaps. Going for it all right here. And a flag down. Christian Matthews, number 12, was the intended receiver. And Bindham never got his head back around to find the football. And that's when you're going to get yourself in trouble. That's when most of these pass interferences pass occur. Pass interference. Defense, number 23. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. You're going to see just a straight takeoff route. A little stem inside there. But Matthews is able to... You know, get past Bynum a little bit. Bynum never finds the football. That's what you have to do. you got to be in a position where you can not only play the receiver, but the ball as well, and Bynum just couldn't find it. Defensive back coach Dwayne Aquino, that look on his face, said it all. It's first and goal for Kansas at the Longhorns' 10-yard line, opening at 90 seconds of our third quarter. Texas in front, 14-3. Stretch play, Sims. Maybe they're going to say no gain at all. I thought he might have gotten a yard, but it'll be second and goal. You know, Ron, excuse me, Dave. Ron Paulus is calling the, the plays now for Charlie, Charlie Weiss. Charlie made that decision a few weeks ago, said he wanted to focus more on being a head coach and not so much an offensive coordinator. But I can guarantee you Charlie had his hand in some of those halftime adjustments. And they came out. They had a, a couple of things that Texas was not ready for. We'll see how the Longhorns adjust. Heaps, little play action fake, avoids the pressure and avoids throwing an interception. He just gets rid of it. Third and goal coming up. When Heaps had it tight in there, had he seen him, you know, initially, and Michael Thompson ended up picking up that tight end, had Heaps seen, Heaps seen him, that might have been six points. Third and goal from the 10, Kansas. Not good at getting into the end zone from the red zone. This might be one of those times that Greg Robinson dials up a blitz. Also, the other issue is who's going to the kicker going to be? Wyman or Doherty? Knocked away. Good defense that time by Adrian Phillips. Justin McKay was the intended receiver. Well, Kansas now most likely will go for the three. And the blitz did come. You're going to see the hit on the quarterback right there as Bindham got there and then a great play by Phillips to break it up. And good pressure and good decision. Good call there by Greg Robinson to go after him and force the hand of Jake Heaps. And it'll be Ron Doherty from Klein, Texas, the senior, who was 5 out of 10 last year. Matthew Wyman missed a 31-yarder. Doherty's the one who came in and made the 21-yarder right before half. This will be for 27. Doinked it and got it to go. 
So Kansas again cannot get six from the red zone but they move just a little bit closer. Jake keeps showing that he is indeed tough enough as he takes a shot. It was a good throw too and a little bit of a lucky break for Kansas on the kick. Back in 2011, there's the date right there, BYU. And number 24, Texas, right here at DKR. And Jake Heaps, then with the Cougars, hit 11 different receivers who carried the bulk of the total offense. Heaps wound up 22 of 38 for 192 yards and a touchdown. And we covered that game, Dave, and I was uh, duly impressed, as was Mac Brown, with Jake Heaps and his performance in that game. And I was amazed when, you know, later on, and things didn't work out for him that season. Ended up being benched and not playing and decided to transfer. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think about two months later, middle of November, I had a game at in Provo and he was already on the bench. This is Johnson. And well covered by Kansas Johnson. Very dangerous. Average over 20 yards of return, but nothing going there and not particularly good field position for Case McCoy and the Longhorn offense. What would you like to see out of McCoy in this half? I think he's been pretty steady. I'd like to see him hone in on, on some of those deep throws that he's made. He's, he's overthrown them and he's thrown a little wide outside. I'd like to see him give his receivers a chance to make one of those plays. But I thought he's done a great job in the first half of getting the Texas offense into the right place. Sometimes that gets overlooked. You just look at how's the guy throwing a football. There's a lot more to quarterback than just throwing the ball. McCoy trying to win his first home start. Fakes on the roll. McCoy makes it out the 22 yard line. Pushed out of bounds there for a short game. Victor Simmons. It's more like a five yard pickup, actually. The play made by Jonathan Gray, so it'll be second down at five. Kansas, a little man to man there. That kind of thwarted any chance for a big play because Simmons was all over the coverage. In the shadows, Gray has a hole and he'll have a first down. Heaney on the stop, but not until it's a Longhorn first down. And another blitz coming from the safety, Isaiah Johnson. And again, Case McCoy switches the direction of the play and runs away from the blitz. 54 yards for Gray. Get out to the 34 yard in for five more. It'll be second down at five. Jake Love on the stop. I watch a lot of Matthew Stafford because I, I got the Lions and I live in that area. <laughs> That's a Stafford type throw right there. Just a little sidearm sling. And McCoy can do it a lot of different ways. And doesn't often look pretty, but it's effective. Pressure here, McCoy gets away nicely, still in trouble. Fires it down the field and he has a first down. It's Marcus Johnson, the sophomore from League City, Texas, with a gain of seven and a first down. Nice poise that time by the senior McCoy. Kennedy Estelle totally blows the block. You see the inside rush gets there, and McCoy has the savvy to avoid that and make the completion. Now Texas goes up tempo, picks up a couple there on a quick snap. Jonathan Gray. Kevin Young in there on the stop. He had a couple, maybe three. Call it second down and seven. Tempo, a big part of this offense. He slowed it down a little bit for this one. McCoy throws into the blitz, and that was extremely dangerous. Trying to get it to Johnson. The throw was too high. The pressure coming in, I think, from Heaney, and this was almost a disaster. And Kansas was on to this one. Now they sent both linebackers to that side with the motion. Both Heaney and Jake Love went in that direction. Now Texas is going to see that from upstairs, and they're going to show them that same look and have a counter for that before this one's over. And those are some of the coaching eyes that we were hearing about yesterday that helped out Texas during this win streak. Boy, got it. 
Can always count on Jackson Shipley. Incredibly dependable receiver down to the Kansas 46 again to 13 and a first down. Well, again, they're trying to cover Shipley from off. And you, you can't cover him from off because he's too wily, he's too quick, and he'll just curl it up in front of you. And McCoy's on the same page with him. When you say from off, what do you mean? Well, the, the defender is about 8 to 10 yards off of him. Uh, back and that just gives him too much space to, to move I, I come up and I try to get pressure and get hands on him right away and not let him shake and bake like he does so well out in that open field and make you take a false step and then he gets separation so to me if I'm covering Shipley even if he's off the line of scrimmage and I can't get a good press I'm gonna put someone in there to disrupt his route early on so that he can't do that to me when I'm far away from him second down at 10 They fake to Johnson. Gray breaks one tackle, but not another one. Courtney Arnick brought him down after a gain of two. Here comes another third and long. And again, Kennedy Estelle is having problems with an inside move. He's getting beat across his face. That's twice now in this series. And he's going to have to find a way to fix that. Six out of ten today, Texas in third down. That's 18% higher than they have done so far this season. Trying to improve to six and two, become bowl eligible, and go to five and zero oh in the Big 12. Third and long is not where the Longhorns want to be. Shipley. And McCoy is going to be sacked for the first time in about 80 pass attempts. Michael Reynolds puts him down four and a half sacks on the season for Reynolds. Texas will have to punt. Nice little stunt here. You're going to have this guy come inside and then he'll come outside and then it's a little twist action. And right here you see the late delay coming inside right there by Reynolds and a nice stunt by that defense and Texas wasn't able to pick it up. It had been 84 straight pass attempts for McCoy without being sacked. Embry waves for the fair catch. But it's got to be a difficult sun to see the football in. Kansas will take over at the 12. You know this has kind of been Kansas's M.O. They hang around, but the second halves have not been friendly to the Jayhawks. At the moment, they've outscored Texas in this quarter 3 0. Texas football on Longhorn Network is brought to you by Cavenders, where the Old West meets the New West. Lively crowd on hand here at DKR. Back to welcome their Longhorns after 42 days playing in other places. And while they were doing that, they were winning. Bevo's back in place. The Longhorn traditions have made this program one of the best in the country in place. And the defense has played well for Texas. Kansas has has too, though. And that's why we have what we have on your scoreboard there with 9.03 to go. Sims made one man miss, but not two and not three. And for more on this Longhorn defense, Kaylee Hartung is with us on the field. Kaylee? Dave, you may see a lively crowd in the stands, but the Texas defense on the sidelines during that last series, there was no energy to be seen there. That was until it was their time to hit the field, and Jackson Jeffcoat, not liking what he saw, shook his head, turned on the smile, and said, let's do this, boys. Yeah, it's an interesting point because uh, Kansas has been a tough out here much like they were a year ago and Ray both coaches talked about last year's game quite a bit from different perspectives of course that's saying it's one thing Dave doing it's another there there's Jeff coat right there let's see what he's got Oops, a little bobble there and that's going to be incomplete third day Charlie Weiss's comments were basically you know Texas has the same players he did say that <laughs> and uh, that kind of rubbed Texas wrong a little bit they, they took umbrage with that and Yet, uh, looks like Charlie is uh, a little prophetic, if you will. At least the way things have gone thus far. And Mac Brown spent part of his Sunday when they got back from TCU, after they finally got back from TCU, talking about that game. Two out of eight third downs for the Jayhawks so far. That won't work. Dalton Santos is too good a tackler one-on-one -on -one against most anybody Brandon Bourbon was the receiver that time fourth down and eight coming up this is a scheme that Greg Robinson added when he came and made it a bigger part of what they do and it's it's called cover two man they get two safeties deep and then they have the five underneath guys locking up in a four-man rush and uh, that that just took away whatever uh, that Kansas wanted to do it wouldn't matter what they wanted to do with that one because Texas had it covered Cole 
Jay Johnson around the 42 yard line. Another punt for Pardula. And he rips this. Wow, is this hit. Johnson back to the 21. It goes inside the 20. And it's going to die at about the 17 yard line. Jake Love gave a little kick, too. <laughs> Which you can't do, and it will have no effect. But what a punt by the junior from San Jose. 72 yards. Somewhere in that pile, Ray, is Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator. And there you go. The hairstyle makes him stick out. Uh -huh. And, you know, we talked about the tackling. They are really tackling very, very well. Yeah, they're playing good defense right now, Dave. You can't put anything on this defense. And, and you know, and Greg Robinson's over there, and he's keeping it positive. He's getting them uh, gathered up, and they're feeding off of him, and, and it's all good. Now they got to get that going on offense. Now the deep passing game that Texas used so well last week against TCU has been held down by a stubborn Kansas defense. Malcolm Brown gets jumped after two yards by Ty McKinney, one of those many junior college transfers. They're making an impact, particularly on defense for KU. So it'll be second and eight. Case McCoy threw three deep balls early in this ball game, and they have not gone to it since then. And, and that's different than, you know, last week against TCU and against Oklahoma. They kept throwing it down the field and, and getting them safeties out of there and, and making them worry about that a little bit. And they kept doing it. They were all incomplete, I might add. Going to Mike Davis, and he just spikes that on the ground. So it'll be third down and eight. Nice read there by... The linebacker Skyler Miles, he saw a screen the whole way and, and basically took it away from him. McCoy had no choice but to just down that one. Well, I would say Kansas does not look like a team that hasn't won a conference game since 2010. What is it about them in Texas? They just find a way to play good against the Longhorns. They played better today than I've seen them on film all year. Now, at the moment, Baylor makes everybody look bad. Well, that's true, too, but they played some other Lead folks. Substitution. There. Offense, 12 players in formation. Five-yard penalty, third down. You can see Mac Brown saying, there's no way. And the referee said, yes, there is. And Max is going to have to take that one. So that puts the ball back at the 15-yard line. It'll be third down now and 13. Playmaker DJ Johnson is sitting this one out. A deep pass to Davis here. Marcus Johnson right here. He's one of McCoy's favorite deep targets. McCoy's talking to him, pointing at him, and see what happens. And there he goes, deep down the field, and it's out of bounds. That pass was not going to be catchable. Kendall Sanders was the intended receiver. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, and McCoy made a last-second decision to just wing that one, and he threw it out of bounds intentionally because he wasn't zoned in on the deal. But I like that they tried to stretch the field there a little bit. You know, the deep pass doesn't have to be uh, complete every time to have its effect on a defense. Now Anthony Farah has struggled a little bit today. He had one punt of 17 yards. This one, pretty good. Got it up high. Oh, and that's going to be a flag. Oh, my. Mental error. Might have been a physical hit, but it was a mental error. John Harris knows better. So Kansas is going to get excellent field position out of this. And back, he just walked right by Coach Brown and didn't say a word to him. He will later, though. I promise you that. Interference with the opportunity to make a catch. Kicking team, number nine. 15-yard penalty. First down. And Harris wasn't trying to do anything here. He just kind of lost where he was and didn't see where the ball was and got in too tight. Yeah, but your score in time and a little bit of a surprise here at DKR, 14 to 6. Longhorns in front of the Jayhawks in this Big 12 match where you got to keep pace with Baylor. But Kansas, now the problem with Kansas this year, and they haven't, they're 0 4 in the Big 12, is they start well, but they don't finish well. And that's been a problem in the Big 12 this season. Their last three games, look at this. They led Tech, tied with the Horn Frogs, led OU. But the column on the right has the bottom line, and that's all that matters. It was 14 to 3 Texas at the half. We're 14 6 now. He stays in a quarterback, faces a lot of pressure, and down he goes. There you go. And the ball is loose. Big Chris Whaley does it again.
Cedric Reed. The sack forced fumble, and Greg Robinson's defense is on the board, and Whaley has his second touchdown in three weeks. The former running back has not forgotten where the end zone was. He had the big one against OU that was a real backbreaker against the Sooners. And now this to make it 20 to 6. You know, Matt Brown talked to us about that. He said, you know, it's not all about the offense. It's a team sport. And when we start getting our defense scoring points, special team scoring points like they did against Oklahoma, that impacts the whole football team. That, that's a, a tide that raises all boats. Steve Edmond shaking up in the end zone. But how about Whaley, the senior from Madisonville? Watch him, number 96. Yeah, this is just relentless pressure. And there's the, the rip away, the forced fumble. And here goes the big man. He says, nobody's going to catch me on this one. Look at his head lean back a little bit, started digging. All right, now, there is a review from the booth as to whether or not Heaps was down. And the obvious answer is no. No, that's falls fumble, out. fumble well, all the way. With the shadows, I can appreciate the replay official. David Ames wanting a look, but it's pretty clear to us anyway. This is a fumble and it should hold up. It is not indisputable video evidence. Meantime, a little bit of a concern, very slow coming off the field, is Steve Edmond. He is being escorted by a couple of trainers. The way they got an assist, that ball actually bounced off the knee of the official right into his hands. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. There's Edmund right there. Did not see what it could have happened to him. And hopefully Kaylee will be able to give us a report on Edmund's condition. Third force fumble. Reed is a player, uh, Ray. He is just a player. Yeah, he's, he's unblockable one-on-one -on -one over the course of a 60-minute ball game. And that is a, not too many teams in the country can post ends like Jeff Coat and Reed. They remember when Chris Whaley, I don't know Longhorn fans remember when Chris Whaley was a running back when he was a freshman? How yeah. About, that had to be miserable to stop him. He looked pretty good there, doesn't he? He's got a lot of power. Big guy. But this is, here he is against Oklahoma with that touchdown, the interception. He had brought back 31 yards. And then today, you know what? It helps to be a former running back every once in a while. I see that ball bounce off the knee right into the hands of the athletic. Chris Whaley, and he's the head back, heading to, to the house. That is the third non-offensive touchdown by Texas this year, and two of them are by Whaley. I think Edmund may have got hurt in the celebration. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, somebody landed on the, on the, the big jam pile down there. And you know what? You really can't afford to lose Steve Edmond if you need to do. Now, he's maybe shaken up, and hopefully he'll come back in the game. But they're going right back on defense, Texas. Well, there's the punch in the mouth that Kansas has absorbed all season long in time uh, during Big 12 play. How do they respond? This is Darian Miller. A gap here. Kansas will get to some field position at the 35-yard line. Edmund is number 33. Let's see if we can figure out what on earth happened to him. Well, here they are, and everyone's trying to catch some Whaley right there. And when he came down on that left leg, that's that's when Edmund apparently was injured. He's up doing the big chest bump, and he watched that left leg when he comes down. Oh, he landed and twisted the ankle. He landed on Whaley's foot. That's a big foot, I'm guessing. You don't want to tell that story about how you got hurt. You don't want to embellish something there. Back on the ground, Kansas goes to Sims, and there's Reed again. Drags him down after a four-yard pickup. It'll be second down and six. There is Steve Edmund, the junior from Dangerfield, Texas. He had to move outside when Jordan Hicks was injured. Dalton Santos picked up some playing time. He's a very good player, too, for the Longhorns in the middle. That's one thing the Mac Brown told us at the beginning of the season, Ray. I'm very happy with my depth. Yeah, and it's played out for him this season. Throwing it in the face of the pressure. Sims, but they're waiting for him. You can see Adrian Phillips, number 17, leading the parade of tacklers. And Malcolm Brown. 
very short game there. Yeah, and what they did here, they moved Adrian Phillips into the inside linebacker position to pick up for Steve Edmond, and they, that's their dime formation. So here he is, and now he, this is hard to learn to do as a linebacker to play the screen. He recognizes it, sees it, avoids a blocker, and comes up and makes a hit, and that, that's just outstanding play. I'm just really impressed with Adrian Phillips and his ability to play several different positions around the football field and be effective. Third down at about five. A lot of pressure, and we have a flag. Yeah, it's a false start on Kansas. That safety keeps it beat. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Third down at 10. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, that's uh, fortunate for Kansas that they did commit that penalty because I think Heaps was going to get tattooed on both sides again as Texas brought an all-out blitz off of each edge. Heaps taking a deep shot down the field. Jump ball knocked away. Trying to get it to Coleman. And it was well defended by Duke Thomas, fourth down and nine. And Thomas got his eyes and, and back to find the football this time, and that's the difference in why he's able to make plays. See his eyes? He knows where the ball is now. He's got the receiver. He feels where he is. That's how you play defensive corner right there. Outstanding job by Thomas correcting an earlier mistake. So Johnson back deep for Texas around the 20-yard line. Last punt by Pardula was 72 yards. Not this time. He's in big trouble. The ball was dropped, and the punt was partially, maybe even been partially blocked, so there will not be a flag for the contact. Now, as soon as he drops the ball, he's fair game. Adrian Phillips came in and just tattooed him. That's a 21-yard punt. He just uh, basic just stone-handed him. Boy, <laughs> Phillips almost had himself a blocked punt, too. He overshot it a little bit. So the football is marked at the Texas 43-yard line, and here is the senior, Case McCoy. Very poignant comment that he made. We talked about it earlier that he made yesterday with us. My first start here against Ole Miss, I didn't feel like I was the starting quarterback. I played because David Ash was hurt. Now I feel like I'm the start. This is my start. With Ash's situation so uncertain, Jonathan Gray carries for about three. Nobody seems to really know when David's going to return. Yeah, and, you know, they had, as, as Mac Brown said, more than once, we had to move on. Well, you have to. I mean, they don't know when he's coming back. He's got the concussion symptoms that, that won't apparently leave. And so even and now it's been so long, he's out of shape. So how long do you wait? You can't. Gray. This is how Texas has been putting away games in this Big 12 winning streak because a pickup of four there, love on the stop. I'm anxious to see how much this offense is going to pick up on the momentum that the defense has uh, brought here now. Uh, defense score, defense force from three and out. Can the offense take that momentum and, and manufacture something themselves? Third and three. And Shipley in motion. There's a deep shot down the field, and it's going to be caught. Marcus Johnson inbounds at the 18-yard line. First down, Longhorn. There's that mad bomber going at it again. Great throw down the uh, sideline. Let's see if he gets the feet in. Has the ball. The foot is in. You just need one in college football. That's a good catch. Booth didn't even buzz down. They go out to the flat. This is Johnson again, stumbling around just a little bit. Still got about five yards, maybe even six. Simmons on the stop. And Texas moving quickly. And you can feel a little bit more urgency with this Texas offense now. I think there's a sense that they can really put Kansas in a horrible position if they can get seven here. And good tackle. Gray short the first down by a couple. Tackle made that time by Kevin Young, a senior from Alafi, Kansas. And I like it that Major Applewhite and Case McCoy kept throwing the ball down the field. They hadn't had any success with it, but yet they, they keep doing it, and you're going to hit one of them eventually. And uh, uh, Kansas has committed a lot of guys in the box all day long, so it, it's been out there. At least the opportunity has, the one-on-ones, and they finally took advantage of it. Malcolm Brown into the tailback position now, number 28 for the Longhorns on third and a couple. 
fighting for the extra yard. She'll have a first down. It'll be first and goal, Texas. Well, give Malcolm Brown a lot of credit on this one because he was stung in the hole by a couple of guys, and he just kept the legs driving and pushed that thing. 48 yards, Malcolm Brown today, 12 carries, two touchdowns. Also, McCoy beginning to manage the clock, even in the third quarter. Got a tight end deal down here again. They like to run towards that. And stutter step by Brown, and down he goes at the four. Really, I think his own man, Greg Daniels, had as much with the tackle as anything else. Gain of five, second and a goal. Ben Healy in there again, along with Sendish. Great block by Daniels and Swain. Both those tight ends in that package got their men. Pretty simple play here. Brown fighting for everything, but he won't make it. It'll be third and goal. These are just simple handoffs, nothing fancy. Texas bringing in another offensive lineman and look for him to go into that overload. And they scored two touchdowns in that look with four linemen left of the center. And Kansas has not had an answer for that. Might as well go back to it. Do you ever run away from an overload? You can, and, and certainly a lot of people do. Depends on how the defense adjusts. And, and McCoy has that ability. All right, where are they and what, how are they adjusting? And they have it. They're going to go right over here. Yes, they do. And Brown fighting for the extra feet. He gets the six. Three touchdowns for the junior. And this one, I, you know, in the last couple of touchdowns by Brown, we were uh, complimenting offensive linemen because there was huge holes. This one is all Malcolm Brown. He ran over through and, and uh, around people to get in there. Look at the fight uh, just to keep digging them legs and get into the end zone. The kid's got a nose for it, doesn't he? That's a career high. Three touchdowns for the junior from Cibolo, Texas. 9-57-335 for the Longhorns. And all of a sudden, what was a quiet stadium when Kansas was within eight. Pretty pumped up now that the Texas lead is up to 22. Malcolm Brown and Jonathan Gray have spearheaded a very powerful tandem. Actually, Joe Bergeron deserves some credit, too. Joe is not getting the ball as much, but he's done impactful work on special teams. But he might see him in the fourth quarter just to make things miserable to finish off a game. And here they are talking about the running game, those two big running backs. Mal, the big physical back, man, third and inches, man, he knows he's going to get that first down. Jay Gray, man, with speed stuff like that, with, with a little bit of power mixed in, it's just it's an awesome duo. See you next to this one. Jonathan Gray takes it home for the Texas Longhorn touchdown, a 45-yard run. It's kind of a pick your poison. You can try to tackle them. They're going to break tackles. As an offensive lineman, you want the freshest back in there that you can. Somebody really go in and punch the defense right in the mouth. And they're getting five, six yards of pop. They're running through tackles. So they're doing a great job for us. And that combination is it's pretty deadly right now. Hands it. Brown, easy off left tackle and into the end zone. As he blasts his way in for the touchdown. And so Gray, 67 yards on the day. Brown, 56 yards on the day. And that's just that's just a headache for defenses. Even one as tough as Kansas has been for most of the afternoon. Don't forget, one of those Texas touchdowns was a defensive touchdown. And Miller will take the knee. And if you're Malcolm Brown, you are having a Saturday to remember. No doubt about that. Here he is at first one. I'll tell you, it was all about the offensive line there. But here's Brown making a man, missing the hole, and then running, getting it down inside. He'll just finish it off himself as he pounds another one in the end zone in this last one. This is vintage Malcolm Brown, who has capitalized on the new identity of this offense. The first uh, six games, one rushing TD in the last two games, Dave, five times he's found pay dirt. So what do you do if you're Kansas? So you leave heaps in the game, and I guess you're just going to start pitching it all over the field to try to get back in this game. But this is a team where offense is not their specialty. And of course, as soon as you say that, the reverse jinx and the big run by Darian Miller almost to midfield. Gain a 23 and a first down, but the numbers say otherwise. 114th in total points, 98th in rushing, 112th in passing, 117th in total offense. And that is Phillips, who is a little bit shaken up. 
They can ill afford to lose Phillips. To me, he's the leader of the back end of this defense right now. Up front, it's hard to pick a particular leader because they're all playing so well. Let's get more from Kaylee on the field. Before Adrian Phillips took the field for this drive, he alerted a trainer to the fact that he was feeling pain on the left side of his torso. When he would bend to the right, you could see the expression on his face was not pleasant. He got on the bike, tried to stretch it out and stay loose as he could. I'll let you guys know what I see as he returns to the sidelines. All right, thank you, Gailey, very much. Five tackles and a pass breakup for Phillips. A lot is asked of him in this Texas defense. Heaps straight ahead. They stay to the ground with the redshirt sophomore Miller. And he gets three into Texas territory to the 49 yard line. It'll be second down and seven. The final might have been the final play of the third quarter that started out promisingly for Kansas. They picked up a field goal. But again, their failures to score touchdowns in the red zone has cost them. That and then the Texas defense kind of ratcheted things up behind Cedric Reed, forcing that fumble. Whaley taking it to the house. They do get the playoff before the quarter ends. Heaps, long throw, and it's dropped. Yeah, and that's probably about how that receiver feels. Right, that's <laughs> when things start going south. That may be in the bottom, falling out of Kansas's offense, that explosion you heard. One quarter to go for the Longhorns to remain unbeaten in Big 12 play. Fourth quarter about to begin here with Ray Bentley. I'm Dave Lamont. We're upstairs. Kelly Hartung rolling the sidelines for us here on Longhorn Network. Texas taking command of this game with big plays. One on defense and then a grinded out offense. And the running of Malcolm Brown. Three touchdowns today for the Longhorns. The only little bit of a headache here is Adrian Phillips had to leave the game. And we noticed on the sidelines a little ice bag around his left hip. So we're not sure if that means he's out of the game or not. Out of the game at the moment is Jake Heaps. And in the middle of the drive, starting this third and eight, Montel Cozart is the quarterback. And he'll hand it off. And it won't go very far at all. Sims gets a yard, fourth and seven. That's a curious decision by Thank you for Charlie saying there. that. Thank you for saying that, because I was about to say, why in the world would you bring him out there? Yeah, a third down and eight situation like that. Now, now it looks like they're going to go for it here in desperation on a fourth down and six. Yeah, and they bring Heaps back in, who's a better thrower. Heaps off his back foot, looking for a penalty maybe, and it's incomplete. Rodriguez Coleman almost made a remarkable catch, and he might be shaken up. On his right, <clears throat> excuse me, right knee. And Duke Thomas, he learned from his previous mistake. Watch him get his head around. Doesn't look good here, but now he says, okay, where's that football? And that's what saved him from getting another pass interference call. Uh, the last second, whipping the head around, and then, all right, you're trying to find the football. If there's a little bit of contact, the officials will usually let that slide. But if you're not looking for the ball, they're going to flag you every time. And Rodriguez Coleman, if you saw his right leg bent back in a rather awkward manner, we're going to step aside here. Texas in front, 28 to 6 on LHM. And after the game today, be sure to stick with us and check out the game day crew as they break down the biggest stories and the plays of the day. Texas game day final, powered by Chevy Silverado, today after the game on Longhorn Network. Texas ball. The 48-yard line, first down and 10. If the Longhorns try to close this game out, they go to the ground again. And Gray picked up a couple. The good news is Rodriguez Coleman was able to get up and walk off under almost his own power. He was slow to get off the field, but he was walking, so that was good. It looked pretty scary on the replay. So we're happy to report that uh, he was able to at least get himself off the field with a little bit of help. McCoy, that's going to be a first down. Nice throw to hit the receiver in stride. Kendall Sanders for gain of 11 and a first down. McDonald on the stop. And Sanders does a nice job getting off the press and getting inside the defender, and that makes it an easy throw for McCoy. You see the Longhorns try to milk the clock, the play clock a little bit. It's not quite that soon to run your four-minute offense, but they are going to try and milk that thing. Thank you. 
Corey Sola, when he got drilled, and that pass is up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Catch made by Isaiah Johnson. McCoy is down, down just in a sitting position back at midfield. It was Jake Love who forced that high throw. It was an awkward looking play to begin with. Yeah, he's going to give a little, it's a fake quick screen. And McCoy's got to feel that. Now, here's a little volleyball that's played at the end there, and it ends up in the hands of Isaiah Johnson on the interception. But I think McCoy has to sense that and feel that pressure and just eat that one. You know, that, that, he gave the little fake uh, bubble screen, a little hitch there, and then trying to fool the defense and throw it over their heads. But you got to feel that pressure. And sometimes you just got to take a sack. And you hate to do it, but sometimes that's the best play. Uh, you know, the last thing you need is for Case McCoy to get injured. As you mentioned, the depth of the quarterback for Texas is thin, alarmingly thin. Kansas just staying on the ground. Big of about three. Jackson Jeffcoat on the stop. Good pursuit by Jeffcoat. Great change of direction by both him and Cedric Reed. The athleticism of those guys that they combine with their power is what separates them and makes them special ball players. Kansas has never won in Austin. Their last Big 12 win was November the 6th in 2010. And they went through some trauma a few years ago the Mark Mangino firing after a 5-7 and seven season. And they started the year 5-0, and oh, no gain. In fact, a loss. Jeff Coat in there on the stop, along with Leroy Scott. Jeff Coat's so good. He's so strong. He, he just takes the offensive tackle, pushes him back, and moves him where he wants to, gets off, and then makes the hit. And had a little help there. Nice play coming up also from the secondary. NFL guy, Jackson Jeff Coat? Absolutely. See what Texas has done to rush defense. They held Oklahoma to 263 and TCU to 246 total. Today, Kansas is about 227, and there is another sack by Cedric Reed. Reed just works the outside edge move again. He just goes around Islam Sterling like he wasn't even there. Here, here he is. Watch this. He just dips the shoulder, a little rip move, but he's just so fast and, and good at running the hoop. Uh, you know, you run around in the circle as fast as you can, and, and that's what he's doing around that edge, and, and you just can't stop him. Two sacks and a forced fumble for Reed, but a punt for Cardula. Line drive kick. And Johnson will get nowhere on the return. Cedric Reed, the junior from junior from Cleveland, Texas. Talk about somebody with a very bright future in this game. Cleveland Reed has it. Right there, sitting back with hand on his knee. Thank you, Ray. The Lost Dodds, the athletic director of Texas. And he'll be retiring. And through the years, Texas has accomplished an incredible amount of winning and progress in facilities, 14 national titles, 108 conference championships. Member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, AD of the Year two years ago. And he'll be stepping down next year, the end of August of 2014. So naturally, there's quite a bit of speculation as to who his successor may be. One name that has popped up as uh, roots to this university, Oliver Luck, who's the AD of West Virginia, but there are others. You saw that uh, Smith at Ohio State has said, no, I'm gonna stay in Columbus. So he took his name out of any consideration if he was ever up for it in the first place. Case McCoy stays in the game and he hands off to Malcolm Brown and breaks loose. And he got hit hard, but not until he got to the Kansas 39-yard line following a 27-yard game. So this is a gigantic job, the AD here. It is. You know, it's funny, we were talking to Case McCoy, and he said, you know, my brother told me that uh, when you play football down here, it's like you're on a pro franchise deal. That, that's how the people in this area look at you, and that's how you're perceived, and, and I think that that's the case, and it's true, and, and that's a lot of responsibility on an athletic director. The budget, the, and the different things they have going here, that's a multi a million dollar corporation that you're in charge of and there's a lot of responsibility they also think it'd be a very attractive job it has its reward well, i don't doubt it for a second 
One of the rewards is enjoying DKR on a beautiful Saturday in Austin. Third and short coming up after another four yard game. That's one of your rewards right there is your office, basically, for one of them. Not too shabby. No, not at all. Not at all. And we have a Kansas player shaken up. Can't get a clear number. The second number isn't very clear as to who that is. We're hearing that's 96. Kiba Agostino, senior from Katy, Texas. Charlie Weiss coming out to take a look. And it's a 98. Kevin Stowers, not 96. Uh, my apologies. Stowers, 98. And happy to see that he's able to get up with a little bit of help. Rock Hill, South Carolina is more uh, Clemson territory. Well, Oliver Luck is a name that has come up. Current, here, uh, athletic director at West Virginia. And his son is doing okay in the NFL, Andrew. Not too bad. But he's uh, a guy that a lot of people are talking about as a possibility. Played in the NFL in the state when he was the second round pick of the Oilers. Played at West Virginia, so he has ties there too. So it'll be interesting to see if he is indeed interested. Just so happens the Longhorns are going to Morgantown next weekend. One of those odd coincidences that come up from time to time. Straight ahead and didn't make it. So it'll be fourth down and two as Isaiah Johnson, who had the interception earlier, came up from the secondary to plug that hole. So under 10 minutes to go, and it looks like the Texas offense will stay out there. Yeah, they'll, they'll bring in, excuse me, Dave, that, that formation that they've used to pound in a couple of three touchdowns so far today. They bring in the extra lineman, uh, Cedric Flowers, and they're going to overload that left side, and that's where they run the ball exclusively out of this formation. We'll see where they go now. And McCoy fell down, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be a fourth touchdown for Malcolm Brown. Kansas has not yet figured out how to stop that play in that formation. That's the fourth time Texas has lined up in that. And there's four touchdowns on the board now for Malcolm Brown, the beneficiary of that, that front line blocking there. And they just overpowered him. Five plays, 63 yards, 209, 30 yards. And Brown, 600 yard game of the year, 119 for 20 and four touchdowns. He came into the game with four total on the year, three on the ground and one in the air. Rolling on the field was a touchdown. Previous play is now on the floor review. And I guess, well, the only, the only possibility is was McCoy's knee down when he handed it off. And the answer is no, I don't think you can call that one. I don't think you can change it. I don't think it's enough to change it. Uh, Look. That's I mean, I don't know if you could consider that indisputable video evidence to overturn that. Yeah, they're right now the ball's in there. That's so close. I agree, Dave. I don't know that you can say, hey, uh, that's that's enough to overturn this play. You need inconclusive video evidence to overturn it. And David Ames, our uh, replay official, has been up since the beginning, since replay started eight years at 26 years on the field. And we're in good hands in that regard. Well, there's his look. Now, that's a very good look right there. Right, he's right there. I, I don't think, I think the, the ball has been handed off at that point. After further review, the ruling on the field stands on the quarterback exchange. This knee was not down. And there's always a hidden language with replay. Stands means... Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but we can't prove it. Right, not enough evidence. It certainly wasn't indisputable. Confirmed to means it. we got it. And then, of course, the other option is overturned, which speaks for itself. So Texas ever closer to a fifth straight win. And 5-0 and in the Big 12. And the man of the match today has been Malcolm Brown, who has found the end zone from up close and from far away.
Texas football on Longhorn Network is powered by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. Hey, great look at Austin, which uh, have a few folks walking around tonight, perhaps still in costume. This has been Halloween weekend after all. 35-6, Texas in front of Kansas. We were out in force Thursday night, Dave. I saw him on my way in. We'll have a touch back here. Let's get uh, caught up on some of the bumps and bruises on the Texas sideline today with Kaylee Hartung. Well, on the Texas sideline, the good news is defensive back Adrian Phillips has returned to the sideline after having his left hip evaluated inside the training facility, but we do not yet know what his status is in terms of playing time for the rest of this game. We've seen Steve Edmond, the linebacker, return to the fray after having his left ankle taped up after that exciting celebration following the Chris Whaley touchdown. I will update you guys on the Kansas list of injuries the next chance we get. Yeah, they've had a few as well. We're looking to see if uh, Rodriguez Coleman has come back out. He had that rather frightening fall on his knee. Cozart is the quarterback, and Jeff Coates for Texas making sure that running play gains no more than one yard. So Kansas apparently is going to go down quietly here, at least not trying to throw the ball around. Now they're going to get the young quarterback some repetitions by the looks of it. Charlie Weiss walked into a difficult situation. They had the Mangino controversy. Turner Gill was brought in from Buffalo in the MAC. A lot of high hopes for Turner Gill. He had done well with Buffalo. Didn't work out very well for Turner Gill. So Charlie Weiss brought in. He's just 3-16 and 16, and now on his way to 3-17 and 17 in his season. And he's presiding over what appears to be a 26th straight Big 12 loss. There's lots of work to be done here. Jeff Coat on the stop. Miller on the carry. Third down and five coming up. You know, and I'm surprised they haven't given Cozart much more uh, to do other than hand the ball off since he's been in there. I haven't seen a whole lot of manufactured quarterback runs. No quarterback draws, no quarterback sweeps, a lot of zone read, but it's all been handoff. Yeah, he's just tried that one pass for short yardage. Two carries for 10 yards. Not even a bootleg with him thus far. And he hands it off to Miller again. Miller pops free. He'll get a first down. Dragged down by Thompson at around the 47, maybe the 48-yard line, a gain of 17. Take a look at this. Tim Cole, linebacker number 30, is going to get walled off right there by the tight end, Mundine. And that's a nice block, keeping, keeping him out of the alley. Nobody there to make the play until they get down the field when Thompson shows up. And they stay on the ground. And you're right, Cozart is just doing nothing but handing off, but it's working with Miller. Gets another first down, picks up 11, bind him on the stop for the Longhorns. And while Kansas is picking up some numbers against the Texas defense, still the Longhorn defense, the remarkable improvement over the last few, the last month. Uh, Greg Robinson's first game against Ole Miss, he barely knew the names of his players, barely knew the names of his assistant coaches yeah. as a defensive coordinator. So that was a little predictable, but since then, they've really tightened up. The one connection he had was with Dwayne Aquina, who had been on the staff with him when he was a defensive coordinator here back in 04, and that really has helped. Sims back into the game, doesn't get a whole lot there. Desmond Jackson on the stop. There is Robinson and Aquina side by side. Aquina in the cap. Robinson has been a head coach in college at Syracuse. Been on the staff of the Denver Broncos with Mike Shanahan winning Super Bowls. Been with Dick Vermeil in Kansas City. He's got the fire and the passion. You know, last uh, year he coached at a high school where he had to drive 80 miles each way just to you know show up and, and do the work and but that's he loves it and he'll do it whatever it takes to to be a coach and he's up for it because he has a great passion for it and it's sims again stutter step and a nice move by sims and he'll get a first down shoved out of bounds by kendall thompson and mikhail thompson michael thompson first down after a pickup of 13. He just shook uh, Tevin Jackson there in open field. See, Sims not having a, a great day by his standards. Averages 100 yards throughout his career. So 
Kansas is going to drop to two and six, zero oh and five in the Big Twelve. I also wonder here if Kansas is just being deliberately vague on offense for future opponents. Being this rather vanilla at the moment, knowing that they're not going to win the game, and Charlie Weiss is holding a few cards in his pocket for future opponents. Hmm, I think you're being generous. Okay. I uh, just try to be nice. The few cards he's holding it are all the cards that he has. You think you think this is this is all they have? Yeah. It's, it's a tough time right now, but you know. They've, they've had a resurgence in Kansas several times, and the defensive coordinator, uh, Clint Bowen, has been a part of those. He was involved as a player, and then again a couple of times as a coach when Kansas rose from the ashes. And Kendall Thompson just basically sat down on the field, and the officials blew the whistle, and he comes back to the sidelines. Might have been a, I'm not sure what he did, but he just mm. sat down. No other way to describe it. He's got something in his eye is what it is. <laughs> looking, ah. looking at his face. He watched 35. It's like, I can't see. I, I can't play, man. Let's uh, blow the whistle, somebody. <laughs> well, you got to be able to see to play football. No, you don't. Alex Karras yeah. was practically blind. Made it to the Hall of Fame. That's true. He was a, he could knock out a horse with one punch, too. <laughs> so. And there's Cozart. <laughs> to the 20-yard line. Picks up four, so we got a carry out of him. Reggie Wilson. Getting some playing time with the Longhorns on the stop. Third down coming up. I was curious just to see colors. That's how he knew where to go. Sometimes that's all you need. Apparently it's all he needed. Sometimes you wonder if quarterbacks uh, see colors properly. The way they throw the ball around. Third and two. Undoubtedly two down territory for the Jayhawks. There's Cozart with a good fake with the football, and he'll get down to the five, and in the end zone, touchdown for the Jayhawks. There's a glimpse of what Cozart brings to the equation. There he is, just keeping that ball on the read option, and gets him in the open field, and he shows he's got a little shake and explosion and acceleration. I can see why Charlie Weiss is excited about the true freshman. So my question is, if you're Kansas, you go to two and six here. How do you finish the season quarterback wise? What would you what would you recommend if you could have a moment with Charlie? I think Charlie is doing it right the, the way it is. I don't think Cozart can handle a whole ball game. You know, they've only had him throw the ball a couple of times. He can't bring that part of it. You have to be able to do both. Uh, Cozart gets to the end zone for his first career touchdown. And what a place to do it in DKR. All right, let's get to our play of the game brought to you by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Talk about a truck. You need a truck. Yeah, that looks like a truck heading down the sidelines. Fourth fumble by Cedric Reed. Picked up by Chris Whaley, his second touchdown in the last three weeks. And he's an offensive weapon for these Longhorns. Putting it in the end zone, that's your Silverado play of the game. He is definitely has the play of the game. The player of the game is Malcolm Brown. With his four touchdowns today. No, you like Cedric Reed? Maybe? I like Cedric Reed. I think Jeff Coat played extremely well. Uh, my boy uh, Jeff Swain was blocking people all over the place. You know, they ran that double tight end set 19 times today. Uh, garnered 170 yards and four touchdowns. So there's a lot of guys that are worthy, but I, I will go with you on that one, Dave. Thank you. Malcolm Brown. Of course, he's got. Uh, Got two to go to tie a member of our Texas game day crew over there, Ricky Williams, who had six twice in his career in Texas. Kickoff return by Johnson. Looking for a gap. Look out. But Jay Johnson may have faked himself out. All right, let's look ahead. Texas about to go to six and two, and most importantly, five and oh. We do have a flag down. We'll give you about it in a second. Oh man, have you been to Morgantown, Texas fans? Oh. That's a tough place to be. This is a good game right here. Oklahoma State, stout in defense. You don't think of that very often. Guns up, Texas Tech. They don't like the Longhorns. Really? Yeah, you may have heard that. Uh -huh. And then, ay, ay, ay. These guys, the most explosive offense along with Oregon in the country, the Baylor Bears, December the 7th in Waco. That's an electric finish. And Tyrone Swoops getting a chance to play quarterback, number 18, a freshman from... White right Texas and as Cole McCoy said he's the most popular case McCoy pardon me said he's the most popular guy on campus right now he's the backup quarterback case knows that from, yes from his time spent in that position Joe Berger on the tailback and it'll be swoops who carries the ball gets a couple 
Swoops, a physical specimen at six foot four, 245 pounds, had an unbelievable uh, career as a high school ball player in this state. See the numbers there, just mind boggling. And it's good to get him as many reps as possible because uh, really he's a snap away from being the starting quarterback here. And, that's a concern for Texas. We saw McCoy get briefly shaken up today. I don't have to talk him out of the ball game, but he took a vicious shot while throwing a pass. Bergeron gets outside and gets knocked out of bounds on the Kansas sideline, but he gets a first down. And again, with the return of David Ash, so incredibly uncertain. Even if he showed up tomorrow and said, "Okay, I, I think I'm going to be all right," he's not in football shape at any at, at all. No, and the doctors have to watch him work out for a week and before they can say he's cleared and, and there's just a lot that has to be done and I think Mac Brown made the decision you had to make you have to move on and, and they created a new identity and it's worked well for him. So McCoy will get that first win in a start in this building as swoops you can hear the crowd getting jacked up as swoops continues to move the pile and there's a uh, some evidence for your case of him being the most popular man on campus right there. They love it when the youngster, youngster gets something going. An 18-yard gain. Well, you know, we were talking about when you bring West Virginia and you bring in a tough fan base up in the Big 12 country and the now Big 12 country in Morgantown. It's been a tough year for them with the loss of Geno Smith and Stedman Bailey and Tavon Austin, but it's never, ever, ever an easy trip to make to Morgantown. That pass tipped and caught for a short gain by Kendall Sanders. But you still have, if you're Texas, you still got to play Oak State. You still got to play Texas Tech. And then you finish it up with Baylor. And that is a rugged stretch. Texas is now bowl eligible. They will be in a minute and 48 seconds. So that, but I think we all kind of figured Texas was going to be at the very least bowl eligible. The Big 12 conference title is the next goal. Yeah, that, that's the main goal right now. And, and Case McCoy talked about that. And, and Mac Brown said to him, well, you can be the guy that beat OU, you can be the guy that beat TCU, or you can be the guy that won a, a Big 12 championship. And, and Case liked that idea. He's, he's up for it, I believe. So let's take a look at the standings. We're going to bump up Texas to 5-0 and and 6-2. and OU still hanging around, but Texas obviously has that game in their pocket over the Sooners. Texas Tech and Oklahoma State still on the Texas schedule. Not easy. Not easy at all. Going to be a real challenge. But it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, it wouldn't be worthwhile if it wasn't. Third and long. Fourth and long. And getting a round of applause for throwing an incompletion. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had a nice little <laughs> series there, Dave. He showed a few little things. A little flash running the football, and they just want to support the young guy. And let him know he's well loved. Yeah, that's some nice work by the fans here in Austin. That's very kind of them. <laughs> Senior from Cyprus, Anthony Farah in. Averaging 35 and five. This will be his sixth punt. So we got to look at the two quarterbacks of the future for these two teams, Cozart and Swoops. And probably Cozart will finish this game off. Of course, Jake Heap still has a year of eligibility left, so that ought to be an interesting uh, battle in the offseason for Kansas as to how that goes. And Heaps has already gone through the I started and been benched thing at BYU. Yeah, but the good thing about that is Heaps' attitude. You know, he's, he's the number one fan of Cozart. He's still a leader on this football team. Cozart does something good. Jake Heaps is the first guy there to congratulate him, so you got to give Heaps a lot of credit for his attitude in that regard. Kansas stays to the ground here in the waning seconds of the game with Darian Miller, Redford sophomore, Kendall Thompson on the stop for the Longhorns. What do you take away from this game if you're Texas? Well, you take away that you did enough to win a ball game. Uh, you know, and you got things sparked when you had to get them sparked. There's going to be some teaching and some learning and some things that uh, they'll take out of this to try and get better. But you kept it rolling. You kept it, your goal intact, and it's still out there for you. So this is a positive for the Longhorns. Anytime you win, it is. And hey, 35-13, that's that's not a bad little deal. It was 14 to three of the half, and 14 to six for the first five minutes of the third quarter. And then the defensive touchdown by Chris Whaley completely changed the game. Made it 21 to six, brought the crowd back in, got them excited. The Texas offense locked it down from there with a running of Malcolm Brown. Four touchdowns today. So for Mac Brown, 
This will be win number 156. As the Longhorn head coach, 242 overall. Five in a row for Texas. And the Longhorns are bowl eligible. Joining a bunch of teams who are going to make that distinction with their sixth win today. Dave Campo there, the one-time Dallas Cowboys head coach, shaking hands. This is a win for Texas. And a good one. All wins are good, Dave, but hey, they, uh, they hung around, and then they took care of business in the second half, put the hammer down when they had to. A lot of good things they can take out of this one as they go forward. There's a big stat right there. 5-0 in Big 12 play for the first time since 2009. And again, you think of where this team was a few weeks ago. People just pushing the panic button at times. Not everybody, of course, but a few people beginning to wonder about this team and about the coaching, but they have turned it around. Yeah, things have quieted down dramatically yep. around here, and I guess it's uh, chicken finger time for the Longhorns. You might as well. I don't know if you fed them at halftime, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if it was going to be chicken fingers in the locker room when this game is over with. Might want to open a chicken finger shack. Uh, maybe Jeff Madden wants to... Uh, Get a side business going. <laughs> it's always good to have a second career, man. You just never know. Ain't that the truth. And Kaylee Hartong is standing by with a winning coach, Mac Brown. Kaylee. Coach Brown, you said you wanted this offense to be a power run offense. What do you make of Malcolm Brown's four touchdowns today? Malcolm's really done a good job in short yards and goal line. We were disappointed we didn't make the first one, but we did a much better job in the second half. What was the significance of that touchdown by Chris Whaley? I think the defense ignited everybody. We were standing around a little bit, a little unsure, had two emotional games before this, and we, we told them at halftime, somebody's going to have to step up within this team to get everybody going, and Chris did that. You're now 5-0 and in Big 12 play. How does that feel? Feels great. Ready to go to West Virginia. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Kaylee, thank you. Mac Brown, thank you, and thank everybody at the Texas Sports Information Department uh, for all of their help throughout the week, and everybody here at Longhorn Network also for everything they do to, for us to make us feel as comfortable as they do. It is always a pleasure coming down here, Dave, and, and once again, we're treated like royalty, and it feels good. I, I'd love to be back next week. <laughs> Well, you have to go to Morgantown for that one. Well, I'll just come here and wait for you them to come, come here back. Yeah, you know nothing wrong with that. Let's uh, join now in a Texas postgame tradition, the Eyes of Texas. Eyes of Texas. Welcome to Texas Game Day Final, powered by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Here's your host, Lowell Galindo. Let's get it. Great weather, great second half of football, and a Texas W. I'd say that's worth the wait. 42 days between home games, but Texas walking through the tunnel, hooking the horns, Head into the locker room, post-game press conference, now 5-0 and oh in Big 12 play. Last time they were there, 2009. Last time they scored five straight games with 30 points in Big 12 play, 2009. Not going to make the entire leap, the entire connection to that season, but there certainly is something special happening with this Texas team considering the spot that many people put them in. The last time we saw them here at home, when they beat the Kansas State Wildcats, people were saying, yeah, that's a little bit of momentum. 